Centennial Cup, 1987. Brought to you through the facilities of CIPA-TV Prince Albert, CICC-TV Yorkton, CFQC-TV Saskatoon, and CK-TV Regina. The Richmond Sockeyes earned their Centennial Cup berth by beating the Humboldt Broncos in the Abbott Cup Western Final. But Wednesday night, the Broncos evened the score with a 6-1 victory, putting the Sockeyes into the semifinal Thursday against Pembroke. And the Sockeyes dominated their Eastern counterparts 9-3. Brian Moeller scored one of six Richmond goals in a wild third period. After their loss to Richmond in the Western Final, the Broncos relished the return to the Uniplex, reeling off three straight victories in the round robin, capping it off Wednesday with their victory over Richmond. The Broncos blew the game open with three second period goals, the first from Garnet Kazook while shorthanded. Then just 52 seconds later, Duncan Rahorchuk surprised Richmond's Jamie Stewart. The Broncos were in front 3-1. Just over three minutes later, Brad Bergen feeds Curtis Chamberlain. The Broncos' captain makes no mistake. Humboldt led 4-1 on their way to a 6-1 victory. We played the uh, Humboldt Broncos at this point uh, eight games, and uh, tonight's the big game, Centennial Cup. Uh, we know that it's going to be a test of work ethics and willpower, and we want to win this game very, very badly. What we have to do tonight to beat the Richmond Sockeyes is we're going to have to make sure that we forecheck them as hard as possible in the offensive end of the arena. Make sure that we move the puck out of our end as quick as possible. Give them very little opportunity to get into the game because they handle the puck very well. We're going to have to play discipline, stay out of the penalty box, keep hitting them every time we can. Live from the Uniplex in Humboldt, the 1987 Centennial Cup, Canada's Tier 2 Junior A Hockey Championship. Hello everyone, I'm Rob Anderson and I am your host for tonight's hockey game. And there is an air of excitement here at the Uniplex in Humboldt with the Broncos preparing to play the Richmond Sockeyes in the 1987 Centennial Cup Final. It's the matchup everyone has been waiting for all week. It boils down to the ninth meeting between these two hockey clubs in the past three weeks. And now let's meet the two men that will call the play for tonight's hockey game, Roger Millions and Jay Boyd. Good evening, everyone. Just one week ago tonight, four teams began their quest for the 1987 Centennial Cup Hockey Championship. And just seven days later, after a great seven days of hockey, Jay, it comes down to just one hockey game. Roger, I thought it was a great week for both teams. The Broncos, of course, going undefeated in the three games they played in the round robin. Counting the semifinal game, they played the Richmond Sockeyes, won three of four. And both teams played very good, as I said, through the entire week. I expect quite a game. Well, Jay, four teams involved in the round robin format of this year's Centennial Cup Hockey championship they played through until Wednesday the final round robin game the semifinal was played Thursday and now tonight the championship game all four teams provided some great entertainment over the last seven days the other two teams in the tournament Pembroke Ontario the Lumber Kings and the Dartmouth Fuel Kids from the Atlantic region they had their problems the Fuel Kids got off to a rough start never did recover the Fuel uh, rather the Pembroke team a little young and they struggled as well they won their one game they beat Dartmouth and then of course lost their semifinal game to the end and that's why they're here in the final tonight. As far as the round robin format went, the Broncos went through undefeated. They were three and all overall and that put them into a bye situation all the way to tonight's championship game. Richmond had to play the semifinal against Pembroke and it went from there. There's some key hockey players in both sides tonight as we go into the September. offense because he brings the puck up so well solid behind the blue line he has oodles of experience and it shows he just performed so well throughout the entire Centennial Cup Hockey Championship Jay and he is a big key to that Richmond Sockeye Hockey Club whether they can play tonight a mm -hmm. couple of keys for the Broncos as well one of them Bill McDougall who played so well all season long set the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League scoring record with 184 points and he has picked up here in the Centennial Cup where he left off during the regular season four goals and three assists in the three games he played and he has he has had a tremendous series series another player who is playing very well is the captain a guy that coach Bernie Lynch really likes Curtis Chamberlain lots of experience he played three years in the Western Hockey League and he is doing a job for the Broncos as well here in the Centennial Cup final well Jay the two teams are all set Centennial Cup hockey on SDN will continue in just a moment and more.
more Canadians have made their minds up on Dodge Shadow and Plymouth Sundance. And why not? With 47 comfort and performance features at no extra cost, it's the complete car. Dodge Shadow and Plymouth Sundance, under $9,700 complete. Come and get it. Best built and best backed for seven years or 115,000 kilometers. For the jockey, as one race finishes, the next begins. His business is winning. His preparation, deliberate. But the key to winning is teamwork. The jockey and the thoroughbred. The best team in sports. 80 days of thoroughbred racing starts May 17th at Marcus Downs. In the singing of O Canada. tonight and despite the fact these clubs have played nine times there's going to be some jitters the officials of tonight's hockey game rob baird of regina the referee the linesman also from regina brad davis and john zippo they played nine times jay but both of these teams have to be very nervous about tonight's hockey game i think you have to be when you're playing in a championship final two good hockey teams though and they'll be ready for each other and the keys very much could be the goaltenders in tonight's hockey game for the Richmond Sockeyes, Frank Romeo has been outstanding here in the Centennial Cup. His third game tonight in the championship. Very quick goaltender for the Humboldt Broncos, Bruce Hoffert, who played this season with the Melville Millionaires, and now he's playing for Humboldt for a Canadian championship. Hoffert didn't have much action in the round-robin game against the Sockeyes, but he might be tested tonight. Probably will be. No question about that. I think the depth of these hockey clubs will also come into a play in a championship game such as this. Both coaches, Orlad Curtin back for Richmond and Bernie Lynch for Humboldt, say that they will use all 19 players on the roster. That is something different in the CAHA, Canadian Amateur Hockey Association rules. Only 19 players may dress. That includes the two goaltenders. So they'll have to utilize those people because there's a lot of pressure out here tonight. And it'll be how the teams can handle that situation that really matters. I don't know what type of game we'll see tonight because when they played in the Western Final, of course, all seven games were so close. But then when they met in the round robin, the Broncos winning by a score of six to one. So a little bit different there. Tonight, I would think another close game. I would think so too. That just that 6-1 game was really the only blowout in the entire eight games played today between these two hockey clubs. And we're just about set to go here in Humboldt. The ceremonial face-off is coming up. The coaches have to be wondering a little bit too. We saw a picture of Bernie Lynch just seconds ago. Bernie and Orland have said a lot of things this past seven days, but they both know how important this game is, and they have to transmit that importance and enthusiasm to their hockey players. I know Bernie Lynch has been waiting for this one for four years now. He's been coaching here in Humboldt. He is ready for this one, of course. Orland Curtin back is ready as well. Both veteran coaches, and they've got the boys up for tonight, I'm sure. I wonder if Orland Curtin back, with his two years coaching experience with the Vancouver Canucks of the NHL, maybe has a bit of an edge as far as handling pressure. He's certainly been through the gamut as far as pressure pack situations go. 
You would uh, think so. A lot of coaching experience, not only coaching the Canucks, but also in the minors. And, of course, playing in the NHL. So he's used to this. But Bernie Lynch went a long way last season as well, so he's got some experience, too. There's Orland Curtin back from Cudworth, Saskatchewan, actually coming home not too far away from Cudworth here in Humboldt. And he's enjoyed a big week here in Saskatchewan. 17 years of professional hockey. That's something. So he should be able to handle the pressure. There's little doubt about that. Well, the team's getting set now as far as the starting lineups go. On defense for the Humboldt Broncos will be Brad Bergen and Rob Rice. Up front, Joey Johansson and center eyes. On the left side, Curtis Chamberlain. And on the right side will be Duncan Rahorchuk. For the Richmond Sockeyes, on the blue line, Mike Claringbull, a former Western Hockey Leaguer with the Medicine Hat Tigers. Joining him, Matt Hervey, again, the all-star defenseman, one of two. All-star defenseman name. Up front for the Broncos will be Jason Phillips, another all-star. With him, Brian Kozak at center ice. And on the right side will be number 16, Bill Hardy. Bernie Lynch says the, Bron the Sock guys have a little more experience than his Broncos, and I wonder if that'll be a factor. I don't know. I think the Broncos have a lot of experience as well. Well, the two teams getting set now for the opening face-off. 1987 Centennial Cup Hockey Championship game here on SDN. A full house here at the Uniplex in Humboldt. Ending just a superb week of Junior A hockey action. And referee Rob Fair calls Johansson. And goes back to center. Play is underway on the Sockeye State possession of the puck. Matt Hervey flips it to center ice. They scramble around for it. Finally, the Bronco blue line. Brad Bergen takes over. Bergen just dumps it down into the Richmond zone where Mike Claring Bull has it. Claring Bull for the Sockeye. Slowly works away to center ice. He's being hounded by Chamberlain, but gets away. He throws it inside the Bronco zone. Phillips can't pick it up cleanly. Rob Rice tries to flip it out of his own end. Now it comes to center. Duncan Rahorchuk ahead to Chamberlain. Drop pass to Johansson. Offside called against the Broncos as they try to get something going 31 seconds into the contest. Both teams coming out. I think they'll feel each other out for a while. As you mentioned at the start, though, they do know each other very well from playing each other eight times in the past three weeks. But I think when you play a game like this, you do come out a little tentative and feel each other out for a while. No surprises at all. Broncos will change up their formation as well. Richmond Sockeyes. Sockeyes sending out Jim Gunn along with Brian Muller and Tony Bobbitt. McDougall along with Shyak and Gaber. For the Broncos, Dave Shyak was a questionable starter for tonight's game. Bothered by an ankle problem, but here he is. The Broncos shoot it in, and quickly another offside. And he's a key to the hockey club, number 16, Dave Shyak. Jay, because he's so important, he was a captain at one time this year. He's hurting a bit tonight, but it's such an important game, he's got to play. He is ready to go, Roger. And he's out there along with Billy McDougal, again, the all-star center. As we mentioned in the pregame, preamble a little bit. McDougal's got so much talent with the puck, and they'll have to pay some special attention to Richmond Sockeyes, watching number nine of the Broncos. Bowler and McDougal on the faceoff. Broncos take possession of it. Al Novikoski will pick it up at center ice. Novikoski drops it inside the Richmond zone. They just simply clear at the center. Broncos again shoot it in. Frank Romeo makes the save and leaves it for defenseman Stan Chinchik. Up the wall for Muller. He clears it ahead. McDougal steals it. He loses possession. Coming back, Tony Bobbitt. Bobbitt gets it ahead to gun, and he shoots it down inside the Broncos zone. Novikoski to the left of his goal. Can't play it, but McDougal steals it. He'll work back at center along with Gabriel and Shyak. A long feed to Mike Gaber. And over the line to Dave Shyak. Back to Gaber. He moves into the slot area, but can't feed it off. Gaber plays it behind the goal. Jim Gunn takes over, tries to feed it out, but he can't as the Broncos get a shot, and Romeo kicks it into the corner. Now it's Shaq's shot that goes high and wide. Back at the point, Novikowski keeps it in. His drive right on, Romeo to say, rebound, and Shaq goes wide with it. Chensik finally picks it up, but can't clear. The Broncos pouring it on the pressure. Finally, Trevor Dickey takes it for Richmond, has possession in his own end. Sockeyes clear the zone. A minute 40 gone in the first period. No score in Centennial Cup 87. Championship game. Leonard Esau behind his goal for Humboldt. Esau taking possession of the puck. Flips it around the boards. Billy McDougall clears towards center ice. Finally, it's picked up there by Dave Tomlinson. Tomlinson, leading scorer for the Sockeyes, shoots it back in the Bronco end of the rink. And Rob Rice will pick it up behind his goal. Rice for Humboldt, up around to Garnet Kazook. Kazook tips it to the line, but Matt Hervey keeps it in. His shot goes wide of the net. The rebound will come off now to Rob Rice. Rice takes over, out of his own end, slowly moving it up the wall. Kazook takes it, plays it to the blue line. Hervey can't keep it in, and the puck is just cleared down into the Richmond zone. Goaltender Romeo plays it around the wall for Paul Rutherford. And Rutherford just shoots it to center ice, where Leonard Esau will pick it up. Esau flips it back, and the whistle goes, and we'll get a face off out of center. Centennial Cup Hockey on SDN will continue in a moment. Two minutes, 25 
five seconds gone here in the Centennial Cup Championship game. No score. On ball down Richmond. Corey Belitsky, Dave Tomlinson at center ice, face it off. Richmond clears it down into the Bronco end of the rink. 20-year-old defenseman Brad Bergen brings it up the center ice for the Broncos. With it is Jordy Wingate. Wingate fires it inside the Sockeye end of the rink. Goaltender plays it around the wall, and Rob Rice keeps it in for Humboldt. Deep to the corner, Herbie tries to clear. He cannot. Jordy Wingate holds it in the shot, and Romeo kicks it into the corner. Back to the blue line, kept in by Rice. It's dropped deep inside the Richmond zone. Finally, clearing ball, clears it off the referee, and out to center ice. Now Brad Bergen will go back after it in his own end. Bergen flips it up quickly, and there'll be a penalty behind the play to the Richmond shot guys. Back after it is Matt Herbie. Jay Boyd, that's a bad penalty behind the play as Corey Belitsky was knocked to the ice and the Broncos had the leading power play in the Centennial Cup on Robert and Hill Golden Avenue County. Roger, the Shock guys have taken a lot of penalties in their four games they have played here at the Centennial Cup. Some of them not too smart. And that's certainly not a good penalty right there to Matt Herbie. Well, Trevor Dickey, the team captain of the Sockeyes protesting, and Herbie will go off the ice for two minutes at three minutes and four seconds. Here in the first period, 304, Herbie going off for tripping. The Broncos go to the power play. They have a very good one. And Bill McDougall at center. Dave Shyack and Mike Gaber on the defense. Neil Clark and Brad Bergen. Penalty killing. For Richmond will be Brian Kozak, Jason Phillips, Dan Jensek, along with Trevor Dickey. So the first power play of tonight's championship game goes to the Humboldt Broncos. Gaber. Holds it in now for Humboldt. Flips it to Neil Clark. Back now to Mike Gaber. He has a man open. It's Bergen. He can walk in top of the circle. He lets it go, and it goes wide. Back to the point. It's kept in by Clark. Clark fires it to the corner, and Bill McDougal, he can't handle it cleanly, and it's picked up by Richmond. They clear it to center ice. Gaber takes over for Humboldt inside the Richmond zone. Mike Gaber to the corner. Has possession. Drop pass for Bergen. His shot, and Romeo kicks it out. It goes high against the end board. Stan Chensek takes it for Richmond and moves to center. Jensik flips it down the ice and going after it is Bergen along with Jason Phillips. It'll go right now to Bruce Hofford of Humboldt and the goaltender will play it. 115 left in the power play as Bergen goes to center and McDougal down inside the Richmond zone. McDougal looking for Rob Rice breaking in. McDougal can't handle the pass. It goes behind the net. McDougal still with possession. Feeds it now to Bergen. Power play for Humboldt. In front of that, the shot goes wide. Rebound, shot at shot. Another rebound, a couple of great saves by Romeo as he came up big on the rebound that went to Dave Shyak. Roger, the Broncos have big Rob Rice out there on the power play unit, and they have him up front, of course, as a defenseman. His job is to get in front of Frank Romeo and cause some havoc, and that is what he was doing there. Romeo gave him a few shots on the ankles, but Rice stood in. Well, they got involved right to the right of the net. Here's the replay on that. A couple of chances for Shyak, and Romeo comes out and makes a great save. He didn't waste any time coming out of the crease. And as you can see, they got into it a little bit at the end of the play, and that's going to cost a couple of players. Trevor Dickey going off for Richmond, and it appears Bill McDougal for Humboldt, so now it's a four-on-three situation as far as the power play goes. McDougal with a lot of points this year, as we mentioned, but he is no stranger to the penalty box. Well over 200 minutes he picked up this year in the Saskatchewan Junior League. Not only the leading scorer, but he does spend a little time. He's an aggressive type of hockey player. Less than a minute to go in the power play. It's a four-on-three advantage as Neil Clark takes it inside. The Richmond zone. Stolen by Mike Claringbull. Claringbull for Richmond moves away from Duncan Rohorchuk. Rohorchuk tries to keep it in, and there'll be a penalty to the Broncos from behind the play. Rohorchuk touches the block, and he'll get the call as he tried to sneakily grab Mike Claringbull's stick, but referee Rob Fair right on the spot, Jay, and he caught him, and now the power play's negated. Three skaters aside now for both teams, Roger, and that will mean a lot of room out there. Of course, Brad Bergen, the quarterback on that power play, and it looks like he is staying out on the ice for the Broncos as well. Well, the power play is gone now, but Bergen is still out there. But on the power play, when they do have the advantage, the man to watch is Bergen. No longer, however, as Rohorchuk goes off for holding at 421. The Sockeyes will go to a power play in 43 seconds' time. That's when their first penalty to Matt Herbie will expire with the puck. Mike Claringbull. Claringbull leads to Steve Jakes. Jakes is a former Bronco. He started this season here in Humboldt. Now Claringbull plays it in his own end half a minute before the Sockeyes go to their power play. Jakes drops it behind his goal, and Claringbull will give it the old college try just one more time. 20 seconds left to go in the sockeye penalty. They'll begin their power play at that time. 
Up to center ice is Jakes. He comes to the Bronco blue line and clears it in off the linesman. Wingate plays it in his own end. Skates away from Dave Tomlinson. Jordy Wingate comes to center. A power play begins for Richmond in five seconds. Kazook in the slot. Gets a shot away. It's blocked. Deflects into the corner. And now the Sockeyes go to the power play. Herbie's penalty is over. A four-on-three chance. A shot by the Sockeyes right on. And it's made the save there. That time Bruce Hoffert as he simply went to the ice to cover up on it as Steve Jakes had a chance on the left side, a long shot, but really the first test for Bruce Hofford in tonight's hockey game. And once again, after the whistle, some pushing and shoving between two teams, and of course, that comes about because they have played each other so often in the past few weeks, and they're going to play it tough. All oh, the emotion is such a big factor. 52 seconds left in coincidental minors to Bill McDougall and Trevor Dickey. And the power play will continue for a minute nine as far as Richmond is concerned. Is still in the box will be Duncan Rohorchuk. Referee Rob Fair has been busy so far. Jason Phillips out there for the Richmond Sockeyes along with Brian Kozak, Stan Chensek, and Matt Hervey. Two defensemen that are very offensive-minded. Kozak breaks inside the Humboldt zone. A drop pass for Chensek. Rink wide to Hervey. He lets a shot go. A great save by Hoffman. Fashion. The quick love hand of Bruce Hofford was the difference that time as Richmond set it up so well. The good, quick, hard shot by Matt Hervey on a pass from Chensek. Here's the shot. There's the big save by Hofford. That was a big one. He hasn't been that busy in the first period. And to be that quick this early is a very good sign for Humboldt. Looked like a first baseman there for the Broncos. 44 seconds left in the minor penalties. The coincidentals. Bergen takes it in his own end and has some skating room. Brad Bergen, drop pass for Rob Rice, and Rice picks it up. Slowly takes care of it and shoots it down into the Richmond zone. Half a minute left in the minors, the coincidental minors. 45 seconds in the power play as Phillips turns out of his own end. Scoreless tie. We've played 540 in the first period. Chensik moves inside the Broncos zone, loses possession, and shooting it down to the Richmond blue line. The Broncos get it there after the puck is Bergen along with Phillips. Here come Richmond to center eyes, but they lose possession of the puck and it's stolen by Ryan. And he just shoots it down into the Richmond zone. Phillips behind his own goal. Two seconds left in the coincidental minors. 15 seconds now left. In the final minor penalty to the Broncos, Duncan Rohorchek. Kozak at center, loses it to McDougal. And McDougal breaks down one-on-one. -on -one. He has a man joining him. And a shot by McDougal deflects off Trevor Dickey. Romeo can't hold the puck. The net appears to be off. It's blurring slightly as Romeo hops on it. And he's down at the side of his net as Kozak and McDougal scuffle a little bit to the side. Romeo appears to be injured, though, on that play. He does look to be getting up very, very slowly, Roger, and just four seconds left now in that Humboldt Bronco penalty. Romeo's still not up. He was ran into just the conclusion, and uh, they'll get the trainer out the ice to take a look at Frank Romeo at this time and see if he's all right. Referee Rob Fair is right there. The replay shows that Romeo just gets some contact here at the end. McDougal going in after the puck. And he got that stick up on the back of the neck of the goaltender, Romeo, and that may be where the problem lies. Of course, Romeo, Romeo had that bad knee coming in as well, but as you said, the stick from McDougal got him up around the neck. The trainer's out there now. The training staff taking a long look at Frank Romeo, and you would bet that Orland Curtin back wants him to take a good long look at Frank Romeo because they can ill afford to lose him. He's played so well in the tournament. Well, Romeo was one of the keys in that Western final against the Broncos as well. He played very well, but so did Bruce Hoffert for the Broncos. Centennial. Centennial Cup Hockey on STN will continue in a moment. Four seconds left to go on the Bronco penalty. Frank Romeo is up and about. He looks to be okay. Broncos will be even strength with this four seconds time as Rohorchuk comes out of the penalty box. Romeo gets himself all set and ready to go. Kevin Luke on the face off. Rumble the line with Bullard. Box picked up, cleared to center ice, and it goes in to the Richmond players' box. And out of the penalty box comes Duncan Rohorchuk. And for the first time in quite a while, Jay, we can get back to even strength hockey. It reminds me a little of the first game these two teams played each other in the round robin. There's Duncan Rohorchuk, an all-star right winger, and he is not the type of player that scores a lot of goals, but does he do a job along the boards in a four-checking capacity? That is why he's an all-star at this tournament. No question about it. Some good work ethics on the part of Duncan Rohorchuk. Joey Johansson and Brian Moeller face it off. We're scoreless here in the championship game of the Centennial Cup. Six minutes and 21 seconds have gone by the wayside here in the game as Moeller will leave the face-off area. Tony Bobbitt along with Johansson to take the draw. They tie it up into the slot area. It comes in front. Chamberlain can't get a shot away. Rolls now behind. 
the Richmond net. Rahorchuk can't play it. Moeller gets it to the blue line, kept in by Novikowski. He drops it into the corner. Chamberlain bumps along with Chenzik. The puck is loose for Johansson. He takes it to the right of the goal. The shot at Romeo, the save. Chenzik takes it away, moves it up the wall. It's stolen though by Rahorchuk, and he plays it in. Off the referee, the puck goes. Johansson tries to play it, but Bob it takes it away to center ice. But Novikowski's there to cover up and play it back to some open area. Finally, Johansson shoots it into the Richmond zone. Behind the net, Chensik takes over. Stan Chensik, moving slowly out of his own end, gets it up to Bob, it quickly to Brian Moeller, and he rolls it down into the Humboldt zone. They wave off, icing as it might have been, as he just rolled it down deep. Johansson plays it around the boards. Claringbull will hold it into the point. Claringbull moves it deep into the Humboldt zone. He feeds it in front of the net, taken by Mike Gaber. Gaber rifles it off the boards, and it'll go all the way down into Richmond territory. Frank Romeo leaves it for Matt Hervey. Hervey. Just plays it back to center ice, and Rob Rice, his defenseman counterpart of the All-Star team, will pick it up and shoot it right back to Herbie. They got something going, those two, as finally it comes to center ice. It's stolen now by McCormick. McCormick walks in for the shot. It goes wide of the net. It comes all the way back out to center. Claring Bull will play it for the Sockeyes. Claring Bull leaves it for Rutherford. Rutherford has it in center ice. Good solid check there along the boards. McDougall almost steals from Rutherford, loses the puck. Claring Bull will turn back. Mike Claring ball onto the skates of Dave Tomlinson, a two on one. Tomlinson feeds it to Rutledge, the shot, the save, and a great save it was. As Rutledge let the shot go, and Bruce Hoffert stood up and didn't go down and make the save. There haven't been many, but probably the best scoring chance here in the first period for the Richmond Sockeyes tonight. Hoffert, though, stood his ground, had the angle, made the save probably easier than it looked. Exactly. Here it is in the replay. You see him standing up, and coaches will tell you time in, time out. Have the goaltender stay on his feet. Don't let him go down to the ice. And Hopper did just that, and we will get a face-off inside the Broncos zone. The goaltender standing tall, as we pointed out earlier, so far here in the championship game. Big zeros on both sides, a scoreless tie. Muller, along with Kevin Luke, to face it off inside that Broncos zone. Puck is played to the point, kept in by Claring Bull. He just dumps it into the corner. Now Bergen will shoot it around the boards, and it comes off the boards, out to center ice. Kevin Luke tries to catch up to it. He's held up, and the puck is played down into the sockeye zone. Matt Hervey, formerly in the Western Hockey League with Victoria and Lethbridge, plays it up to Brian Moeller. Moeller moves out of his own end slowly, leads it up towards center off the stick of Claring Bull, back down to Brad Bergen. Bergen gives it to Garnet Kazook, who rolls it in. And Hervey will once again have to go after it in his own end. Around the boards, Kevin Luke lets it go to the point. Esau holds it in, a long shot to flex up high and wide. And it's played by Clark in his own end. He lets a shot go, and Bergen then steals it at the point. Let's a long drive go wide of the net. Finally, Kevin Luke for Humboldt picks it up. Good forechecking by the Broncos here. Some sustained pressure. Kazoo can front the Brett Stewart, a shot of the save by goaltender Frank Romeo. And Brett Stewart would love to have that one back because he had a great opportunity but partially fanned on it. Good chance for the Broncos. Still no score, though. Great chance, in fact. Good save by Romeo. And the shot came from the point. And then it went into the corner, quickly fed out front, and Stewart could not capitalize on the nice pass from Garnet Kazook, but Romeo jumped on it and held on for dear life. Got the left skate out, made the save, and then smothered it. Broncos cutting to the front of the net. Stewart did everything right. He just couldn't get enough of the puck as he just deflected it towards the open corner, and Romeo quickly hopped on it for the save. Corey Belitsky. Jordy Wingate. Now Greg Nelson come out for the Humboldt Broncos. It's Kozak along with Hardy and Phillips for Richmond. Draw to the left. Of that Richmond goal off the faceoff. Puck is down. It's taken by Trevor Dickey. Dickey is hit by Belitsky, but gets it over to defense mate Stan Chensick. Up the wall it comes towards center ice. And with it is Brian Kozak. Kozak for Richmond inside the Broncos zone. Stops, feeds it deep, and goes behind. The Bronco net. Wingate beaten to the puck by Phillips. Phillips tries to move it away. It comes to Bill Hardy. He drops it to the point. To Trevor Dickey. Dickey's long shot. The flex in front. The rebound is there. The chance to shot the flex wide. Phillips and Belitsky go after the puck. Phillips takes over. Moves out of the corner. Has a man in front but can't get it to him. Back to the point it comes. The shot goes wide. And just maybe getting a piece of it was Hoffert. Now played behind the net. The Broncos try to knock it out. Hoffert covers up. And some good sustained action by the Sockeyes. The Broncos running around a bit in their own end. The Sockeyes also and almost came up with that first goal in tonight's game. The Sockeyes probably with more chances there than they had in the game they played the Broncos in the round robin, Roger. They certainly had a number of opportunities. Hoppert had to be very quick to hop on top of the puck as a couple of clearing chances went by the wayside as far as the Broncos are concerned. Now the Sockeyes build on this, their first real sustained pressure of the hockey game. The crowd trying to get the humble Broncos up here in the first period. Joe Hanson and Brian Moeller on the face-offs. 
some line juggling, as you might expect. In this game, Jay, both coaches know each other's team so well, they'll get the lines they want out there, especially Bernie Lynch. He is home in the last change. Orland Kurt, in fact, told us yesterday, though, that he does not like to match lines. He will not send a certain player out to cover and shadow a Bill McDougall because he feels if he does, he doesn't get his best players on the ice as much as he wants them. Well, certainly, that's a good point. And in this situation with home team, however, the Broncos get that choice as far as matching lines as they get that last change. Bergen out of his own end to Rohorchuk at center ice. He tries to hit Joe Hanson. He does, but it rolls inside the Richmond zone. Romeo plays it away from Curtis Chamberlain. Rob Rice takes it for Humboldt. Rice tries to wait for his men get on side. They tie it up at center ice for a faceoff. And again, the players jam up right beside the penalty box area. Centennial Cup Hockey on STN will continue in a moment. 10.22 left to go in the first period. A look at the replay here before the last stoppage of play as Romeo just clears it away from Curtis Chamberlain. Chamberlain very close to getting a scoring opportunity. The Sockeyes pick up the puck of their own end. Mike Claringball will play it out to center ice. Now it's back to the Bronco line. Finally, Chamberlain will pick it up on the feed for Bergen and dump it inside to Richmond end. Claringball behind his goal. Has possession of the puck, and he's getting forechecked there by Johansson. Finally, just works it out towards center ice. First 10 minutes gone here in the championship game. Moeller steals it for Richmond to Hervey. Hervey loses possession of the puck, and Rohorchuk takes it and shoots it down into the Richmond zone. Chamberlain first after the puck. He gets there in time. Drop pass for Rice that misses him, and Bergen will play it at center. Brad Bergen for Humboldt into Dave Shyak, and Shyak shoots it in, but not before Chamberlain was trapped inside that blue line for the offside call. Roger, half a period gone now. We're still waiting for our first goal, but we have seen some very good goaltending early tonight. We have, and goaltending has been the difference in the hockey game. Certainly, there would have been some markers up on the board if not for the play of Romeo and Hoffert to date so far. A lot of low-scoring games in that Western final. Might be another one tonight. Broncos' big line of McDougal, Shyak, and Gaber on the ice as Dickey takes it at his own blue line for Richmond. Western Canadian champion, Richmond Sockeyes. McDougal drops it back to the line. Novikowski for Humboldt plays it back to the Richmond zone. Dickey at center. Ahead to Paul Rutherford, and Rutherford shoots it inside the Bronco end of the rink behind the net. Novikoski is hurried by Rutledge in front. The shot by Rutherford and a save by Hoffert. Good work by Dean Rutledge that time. Out hustling Novikoski to the puck, and he fed it in front for Rutherford and a good opportunity on goal. Another good opportunity for the Sockeyes there. Hoffert managed to get a piece of the dome, deflected into the crowd. Michael Bryan and Eric Wolf, the assistant coaches of the Richmond Sockeyes, trying to Help Orland Curtin back guide this club in this championship game. Tomlinson and McDougal to do honors in this face-off. Puck loose in front of the Bronco goal. Shyak gains possession, drops it now for Novikowski. And Novikowski tries to work out of his own end. Now Novikowski to center ice for Shyak. He can't tip it ahead, but works it now down, deep into the Sockeye zone. Gaber goes after it, along with Rutledge. They lose the puck. Taken now by McDougal to the point, and Esau. And an Esau shot, a weak one, deflects wide. There'll be a penalty call to the Richmond Sockeyes as Gaber was knocked down in front of the Sockeye goal. And now the Broncos will go to another power play opportunity. Bill McDougal, his line is on the ice right now. I would imagine they might stay out there as well for this power play. They've been out for some time. Gaber looks though he might want to change here because he was knocked to the ice. That's very tiring. Stan Chinson makes his way over to the penalty box. 11.05 here into the first period. Chensik will go off for a two-minute minor. Rob Rice is out once again on the power play, and it looks as if he will play up front again. Big fella, he can provide his screen in front of Romeo as far as the Richmond goaltender is concerned. McDougal, Luke, and Rice. Clark along with Bergen on the blue line. On the face off, Clark takes over. Kozak and Phillips will penalty kill. Clark's long shot, and Romeo makes the save. And in the corner it goes for Rob Rice. Back behind the net, McDougal in front for Luke. The rebound goes wide, and again, McDougal has possession. McDougal back to Bergen. The shot, and a great save. The rebound, and there right again is Romeo. No a shot, the puck's wide. Good sustained action. As McDougal had a great opportunity on a rebound. Bill McDougal from behind the net. He walks in front, a couple of shots, and another good save by Romeo as Bill McDougal. McDougal was allowed to walk right out from behind the net and tested the Richmond netminder. Two chances for the Broncos there in the first 26 seconds of this power, uh, power play advantage. Broncos looking to get on the board early. Here's McDougal as he fed it right out in front for Shyak. Make that rice, and then McDougal controls it so well behind the net. He gets it to Bergen. His shot just rifled right on. Romeo had to make a big save there, but he still couldn't maintain possession of the puck. Broncos kept pouring it on. McDougal with another shot that just went wide. And they continue with some sustained pressure here early in the power play. Can't drop the puck, and McDougal has changed. 
Just along with Bill Hardy, 133. Left to go on the humbled man advantage in the penalty box, Stan Chensing for the Richmond Sockeyes. Ryan Kozak wanting a word with Rob Fair, the referee, about that face-off situation. Kozak will do honors along with Kevin Luke. As McDougal tries to get his defenseman, Clark and Bergen, placed in an area that he would like them to stand. Off the draw, Luke tries to kick it back. It's picked up by Richmond, and Glaring Bull shoots it back down into the Broncos' zone. Bruce Hoffert, the netminder, leaves it for Brad Bergen. Bergen, and lets Neil Clark engineer the power play. Clark to McDougal. McDougal up to center ice. Goes down toward the Bronco line. He's being held up by Phillips. He loses his stick, and now Bergen will pick it up at his own end. Bergen comes back toward center ice, eludes the check of Phillips. Brad Bergen inside the Richmond zone, loses it to Claring Bull. Claring Bull clears it to center ice at the foot race now. Phillips along with Neil Clark, and Clark comes back to make the defensive play on Jason Phillips. Clark along the boards, tries to move it away from Phillips. Phillips would like a whistle. Can't do that as the puck is loose, and it comes to Rob Rice. Rice for Humboldt. Into Kevin Luke, who shoots it down into the Richmond zone, and Trevor Dickey will get it. Plays it off the glass to the blue line. Leonard Esau with a good job to keep it in, but only briefly, as Phillips just rolls at the center ice. 35 seconds left in the power play. Jordy Wingate feeds it up the center, deflects off a stick, and quickly the Sockeyes shoot it back in. 25 seconds now left on the Humboldt man advantage. As Leonard Esau gets it in his own end, up to Curtis Chamberlain at center, back to McDougall. And he tips it off his stick inadvertently into the Richmond players' box. Just 20 seconds left in the power play. Penalty-killing units have been very, very strong so far in this period. Richmond certainly has been. They, the Broncos had some chances during the first 25, 30 seconds of that power play. The Sockeyes doing the job now, and Humboldt not getting the chances in the second half of the power play. Now, certainly early, you kind of want your goaltender to hold you in until your penalty-killing unit gets their act together, and certainly that has happened as far as Richmond is concerned. Just 15 seconds left to go on the Bronco power play as Esau has possession. He drops it ahead to Rahorchuk, and Rahorchuk shoots it down. The Richmond line offside, however, as Joey Johansson couldn't wait. And the faceoff will come back to center ice as the Broncos now sluggish a bit at the end of this power play opportunity. Have just 10 seconds left to operate on it. 7.05 left to go in the first period. In a scoreless tie, this is the championship game of Centennial Cup 87 from the Uniplex in Humboldt. Off the faceoff for Richmond, just deflects it all the way down into the Broncos zone. And just five seconds left in the penalty as Leonard Esau has it behind his own goal. Esau gets it up to Jordy Wingate. Wingate shoots it down deep. Penalty is over. Full strength for Richmond. Stolen by Rahorchuk behind the net. Duncan Rahorchuk tries to move it back to the point. Gets it to Wingate. The long shot. And Romeo makes a save through a screen and holds on for a faceoff. Long shot, a screen drive. Right there to make the save was Romeo. Centennial Cup Hockey at STN will continue in a moment. Does your heart thump wildly when you set your eyes upon chocolatey cake with creamy smooth icing? Do your lips quiver at the sight of cheesecake slathered in strawberry sauce? Then you'll be overjoyed to hear new Weight Watchers heavenly desserts are here. Mm. With 30% fewer calories than ordinary cakes. Weight Watchers desserts, they're absolutely heavenly. Weight Watchers, this is living. 6.41 left to go here in the first period. On the replay, the long shot by Bergen was a screen drive. Right there was Romeo to make the save, and he didn't have that much trouble with it, but it was one of those knuckleball type well, That's what I was going to say. It looked like a butterfly coming in. And sometimes goaltenders have a little bit of a problem playing that type of shot. Dave Tomlinson, Brett Stewart. Stewart had a golden opportunity early in the first period for Humboldt. Couldn't take advantage of it. Novikoski keeps it in. His shot goes through a maze of skates. Finally, Tomlinson clears it to center ice. Novikoski's there to steal it for Humboldt. He has possession and shoots it in. Al Novikoski, a veteran of Centennial Cup action. Puck is played around the boards. In the Richmond zone, Brett Stewart tries to hold it in to the point. Novikoski does shoot it high and wide of the Richmond goal. Kevin Luke battles for the puck, along with Mike Claringbull. They continue to dig after it. Now it's played behind the net. Matt Hervey of Richmond around the boards. Rutledge tries to clear it out. Novikoski keeps it in. The long shot. A screen drive goes wide. Back now to Neil Clark. Clark tries to hold it in. It's checked off his stick and played to center ice. Novikoski has open area to just shoot the puck. The Garnet Kazook will pump it right back in. Romeo 
for Richmond. Drops it to Hervey, and Hervey tries to clear it out the long way around. Kevin Luke can't hold it in, but Bergen does into the slot. It's redirected by Kazook, but he didn't get enough on it. That just rolled harmlessly to Romeo, one of the easier saves he's had to make. Roger, a moment ago, you mentioned Al Novikowski being a veteran in the Centennial Cup. Of course, last year, he played with the Penticton Knights of the British Columbia Junior Hockey League, and they won the championship. Here's another look at it as it just rolled harmlessly to the goaltender. Frank Romeo, not much of a shot, not much of a chance for that deflection at all, as it was behind the player a little bit, and he just deflected it. Not taking any chances. To goal. Draw to the right of the Richmond goal. 73 teams tried to compete for the Centennial Cup at the start of the year, down to two. So I guess quite an honor for these clubs to narrow it down to just themselves. It's right off the face off. They hold it for a whistle. A lot of teams try, but only two have a chance to play this championship game. Four make it to the Centennial Cup, and two play in the championship game. As we mentioned the format, the host team, the Broncos, Western Canadian champions, the Atlantic champions from champions from Dartmouth and the Central Canadian champions from Pembroke, Ontario. Pembroke, by the way, will host the 1988 Centennial Cup Hockey Championship next year. Weyburn Red Wings were the last Saskatchewan team to win the Centennial Cup. That goes back to 1984. Not too long ago, the Broncos trying to do it again here tonight. Again, they jam it up for a face-off. The Red Wings beat the Orillia Travelways that year. Seven games. Best of seven series. All the games played in Weyburn. And the Red Wings winning, as mentioned, in seven. And to go back a few years, the Prince Albert Raiders were Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League champions and Centennial Cup winners four times before the Weyburn Red Wings claimed the honor. The days of Terry Simpson. Walensky takes it, shoots it inside the Richmond zone. Romeo deflects it into the corner for Trevor Dickey, and Dickey, behind his own net, tries to elude the check of Greg Nelson. Nelson got a little bit too much of him, though, and he'll go to the sin bin for holding on a power play for Richmond. Centennial Cup Hockey on STN will continue in a moment. Greg Nelson just gets a little bit too much of Trevor Dickey. Down goes Dickey, and... As a result, Nelson will sit out two minutes, another Richmond power play. And they'll send out Jason Phillips, Brian Kozak, and Bill Hardy as Nelson sits in the pokey. Stan Chensing, Matt Hervey on defense, penalty killing for the Broncos. Luke and Chamberlain, Rob Rice, and Brad Bergen will defend on the blue line. Chensing plays the puck in his own end to Hervey, and now Stan Chensing gets it back again. So trying to work on a power play. Hervey turns in his own end. Back to Chensick. Good forechecking by Curtis Chamberlain. One of his specialties, the captain and leader of this Bronco hockey club. Chensick to Hervey out of his own end. And finally, after 20 seconds, the Sockeyes move to center ice. Hervey clears it in to the right of the net. Bruce Puck. Hardy tries to play it. It comes right to goaltender Bruce Hoffert. Hoffert lets it go, and the Broncos pull it out as Rob Weiss takes it from the net and shoots it down to Frank Romeo in the Richmond goal. Matt Hervey picks it up again, feeds it ahead to Hardy, stolen by Bergen, and Brad Bergen is there. Johnny on the spot to clear it in. And Chensick will go after it in his own end. Stan Chensick trying to engineer this power play. He leaves it for Kozak, and he moves towards center ice. Ryan Kozak to the humble line drop pass for Bill Hardy. His shot deflects into the corner. Kozak tries to play it back out front. He loses possession of it, stolen by Shyak, and Dave Shyak will shoot it down the ice. 55 seconds left to go. In the Richmond power play. 4.20 left to go here in the first period. As the Horchuk tries to play the puck. It's right on top of the crossbar. He and Romeo have long, not so loving looks at each other. Dave Tomlinson moves it out of his own end. 40 seconds left to the advantage into Dean Rutledge. Rutledge breaks into the humble zone. He moves into the corner, loses possession. Rice will steal. Rob Rice shoots it down. Into the Richmond zone. Coming up to 25 seconds left. Sockeye's power play, they have had nearly a chance at this bad advantage as Chamberlain takes it, drops it in his own end. Novikoski will get it. From the goaltender, Hoffert. Hoffert has trouble playing it, gives it back to Al Novikoski. Novikoski is hurried into the corner, plays it up to Curtis Chamberlain. Chamberlain with a chance to clear, but cannot. Jakes holds it in. The shot blocked by Chamberlain. He gets another chance to clear it and does. Shoot it down into the Richmond zone. Getting set to come out of the box is Greg Nelson. He's up. And full strength. Goal to Humboldt Broncos. him is Brad Bergen. Tomlinson falls down. Kevin Luke will play it in his own end. Luke around the boards. Mike Claringborn attempts to hold it in. Does. Paul Rutherford drops it deep for Tomlinson. He looks in front of that. Tomlinson shoots and scores! Dave Tomlinson coolly took the puck out of the corner and his backhand makes it one nothing Richmond. That's what the Sockeyes wanted tonight, Roger, to get the jump. And they have the jump now. 
a goal coming with just over three minutes remaining in the period. They did not have much of a power play. No chances at all, really, on the power play. But they got back to even strength, and here's the goal right now. Tomlinson gets it through on the backhand. one nothing for the Sockeyes. Just a good backhand shot as he shows lots of moxie here, moving it out. Just a backhand shot, banking it off the post in the net. Tomlinson scores, and he was the leading scorer for the Sockeyes in the regular season with 43 goals and 108 points. And he showed you why there to make it one nothing Richmond, the goal at 16 minutes and 53 seconds here in the first period. Richmond plays it down in the Humboldt zone. Novikoski with it in his own end, feeds it up high, and it goes into the crowd and will get a faceoff. Number eight, Paul Rutherford gets an assist. And number three, Mike Claringbull also gets a helper on the first goal of the hockey game tonight. That by the Richmond Sockeyes. McDougal wants to take the faceoff with Brian Muller. Gabers into the circle a little prematurely along with Jim Gunn of Richmond, and as a result, they cannot drop the puck. Boy, so significant getting out in that early lead. It is. You want the first goal, especially when you're playing in a big game like this, and that might quiet the Bronco fans down just a bit. Neil Clark plays it at his own end for Humboldt. Clark moves it behind the net for Novikoski. He has trouble getting the puck. Richmond tries to steal. Novikoski ties it up there. McDougal tries to dig it loose in a maze of skates. Everybody's skates getting in the way. McDougal having all sorts of problems knocking it loose. Finally, Brian Moeller kicks it in some more skates, and they'll tie it up for a whistle and another faceoff inside the Humboldt zone as good work there by Tony Bobbitt. Brian Moeller just tying up the Humboldt Broncos, not allowing them to move the puck out of their own end. An awful long time before Rob Fair blew the whistle there. The players had the puck in the corner. Fair let them try and play it out, though. The referee wants to let these hockey players play the game. He doesn't want to blow the whistle all the time. Rob Fair certainly letting him play. A veteran of the Saskatchewan Amateur Hockey Association referees. He gets the honor of doing this national final. Bill Hardy and Kevin Luke. On the face off, they drop the puck unfairly and they'll have to do it all over again. As Bruce Hopper tries to set himself in that to cheers for the Broncos. As the coach tries to get his team going and even up this hockey game. Kevin Luke plays it to the blue line. Dickey holds it in. Deep into the Humboldt zone. Bergen behind his net. For Rob Rice and Garnet Kazook. Rice plays it ahead to center. Brett Stewart can't play it by Chinsek. Almost gets by, but cannot. Now Stewart plays it to the line and drops it inside the Richmond zone. Dickey has possession of the puck. Trevor Dickey for Richmond. Moving slowly. Eludes the check of Brett Stewart, leaves it for Chensick, and Chensick plays it off the boards. It's deflected off the stick of Bill Hardy, and it goes into the crowd for another faceoff. His play slows down somewhat here in the latter part of the first period. Centennial Cup Hockey on STN will continue in a moment. 2.08 left to go in the first period. Faceoff inside the Richmond zone. The Sockeyes enjoying a 1 0 lead. Joey Johansson and Brian Kozak, top of the circle to the right of the net. They drop the puck. Chensick will play it. In his own end for Richmond. Stan Chensick has possession of the puck and slowly decides and waits. Tries to get it going for the Sockeyes. He just clears it harmlessly to center eyes. Rice tips it ahead for Chamberlain. Chamberlain knocks it down but loses the puck. Here's Jason Phillips breaking in the slot. Moves high circle. Phillips with a chance. A shot and a goal! Jason Phillips, the all-star left winger in this tournament. Use the humble defenseman as a screen and his quick shot beating Bruce Hofford. The Richmond Sockeyes have a 2 0 lead. Phillips had three goals coming into this championship game, and there is a big one right there. The Sockeyes jumping out to a 2 0 lead with just under two minutes remaining. And we'll get the replay of that goal now. A very important goal anytime you go up by two in a hockey game like this. Phillips just moves in, takes the pass, moved around the defenseman, and Bruce Hoffert was on the goal. Goaltenders that are moving have a lot of trouble covering angles, and Phillips knew it. He let an excellent shot go. Good shooter that he is. He just picks the corner and gives Richmond Sockeyes a very important 2-0 lead here in this hockey game. They've done it all here in the latter part of this period. Scoring two times in less than two minutes. Trevor Dickey picks it up. For Richmond and shoots it in as the Broncos now forced to come back. Now two goals. Leonard Esau plays it in his own end. Esau comes ahead to center and Dave Shyak. Shyak misses McDougal with a pass and it rolls down deep inside the Richmond zone. Novikoski then plays it at center. Chensik takes over for Richmond. 
Now finally, Dave Tomlinson corrals the puck as they continue to jostle forward in center ice. It goes all the way down, however, into the Humboldt zone, and Leonard Esau has possession. Esau for the Broncos. Works it into the corner for Novikoski, and Novikoski just rolls it all the way down to the Richmond end of the ring. Romeo kicks it to the corner. McDougal and Claring Bull go get it. Mike Claring Bull loses the puck. They feed it to the slot. Esau at the point. He tees it up the shot. A screen drive, and it deflects wide of the goal. Novikoski lets the shot. Delayed penalty now. Going to the Richmond Sockeyes as Hervey touches the puck. And the Broncos will have a power play here late in the period. Big opportunity now for the Broncos. Just 51 seconds remaining in the first period. They're down 2-0. They'll send out the power play unit and try and get one of those two back. Be very important for them to get a goal here before the end of the period if they could. Mike Claringwall, the guilty culprit, is it happen in front of that? There's the shot by Esau and Claringwall. Trips Bill McDougal. Oh, a little sneaky, but he got too much of McDougal and off the ice he goes. So Claringwall going off for tripping at 19.09. Broncos go to their third power play of the hockey game. 2-0 Richmond. 1987 Centennial Cup Championship game. McDougal, Shyak and Gaber, Clark along with Bergen, and Neil Clark plays the puck, moves it away, lets a shot go off the skate of McDougal, Chensik tries to clear, it's the linesman, Clark wants to hold it in, he and McDougal do, McDougal can't find the loose puck, it bounces away to center, and Bergen will play it, 35 seconds left to go, and in the period, as the Broncos clear it in, Chensik will try to play the puck, Stan Chensik moves it away with a nice job defensively on the shorthanded situation, they just clear it down, the Sockeyes do, into the Broncos zone, and Neil Clark will get it. 20 seconds left to go in the period. Bergen tips it to center to Shyak. Back to Bergen. Bergen inside the Richmond blue line. Deep to the corner now behind the net. Bergen feeds it out front and Kozak steals. Just 10 seconds left to go as he tries to hit Phillips on the fly. He can't do that. And less than 10 seconds to go in the first period as Shyak plays it behind his own net in the Bronco end of the rink. Broncos try to move it out, but time is a dwindling here in the first period. Shyak gets it, but the buzzer goes to end the first 20 minutes of play. Good first period, 2-0 to score, and certainly the Richmond Sockeyes take advantage of the opportunities when they needed them most in that period. A real good period for the Richmond Sockeyes playing here at the Uniplex, getting off to a 2-0 lead in the first period. The Broncos, though, will have a minute and nine seconds remaining of that power play to begin the second. I wonder what Bernie Lynch will say to the players in between periods. Well, no doubt Orland Curtin back will have nothing but good things to say to his players when they go in. After one period of play in the Centennial Cup, the score is Richmond 2, Humboldt nothing. We'll return in a moment. We are back at the Uniplex in Humboldt, and after one period of play, the Richmond Sockeyes have opened up a 2-0 lead on the host Broncos here in the 1987 Centennial Cup Championship Final. Two goals late in that, sec in that first period uh, put the Sockeyes into the lead. The first from Dave Tomlinson, the second from Jason Phillips. And that gave the Richmond Sockeyes the two-goal lead that they now enjoy. Here's uh, the way the tournament shaped up over the past week. The round robin portion, the Humboldt Broncos, as we mentioned, off the top, cruised into the final with a perfect 3-0 record in the round robin. Richmond finished second at 2-1. So the class two teams in this tournament definitely meeting in the final. The Pembroke Lumber teams, a young hockey club, third at 1-2. and two. Their only win came against the winless Dartmouth Fuel Kids. The Fuel Kids represent Atlantic Canada at this year's Centennial Cup. The Fuel Kids are perhaps an unlikely participant in this year's national final. Dartmouth finished third this year in the Nova Scotia Junior A Hockey League, but defeated both the Moncton Hawks and Halifax Lions to claim the league crown. The Fuel Kids gained Atlantic honors by knocking off the Charlottetown Abbeys in five games. Behind the bench for Dartmouth, second-year coach Ken Johnson. Johnson played for the Dalhousie University Tigers for three years and was also player coach at Ohio University. The Central Canadian champions are the Pembroke Lumber Kings. The Lumber Kings were dominant in the Central Ontario Junior Hockey League, compiling a 41-12-1 regular season record to claim first place. Pembroke, in their sixth season under the direction of coach and general manager Jim Ferrelli, then entered the Ontario final. The Lumber Kings took out the Nickel Centre powertrains in five games to claim the provincial championship and a trip to the Centennial Cup. Richmond Sockeyes are the Western Canadian representatives to this year's Centennial Cup. The Sockeyes were second place finishers in the British Columbia Junior League, finishing behind the Kelowna Packers. But the Sockeyes went unbeaten through the playoffs, including a five-game sweep of Kelowna in the provincial final. 
Richmond defeated Red Deer Alberta four games to three to win the Western semifinal and then battled with the Humboldt Broncos for the Abbott Cup, which goes to the Western winners. The Sockeyes defeated the Broncos in the maximum seven games to move to the national final. Former NHL player Orland Curtinback is the man behind the bench. Curtinback played in the NHL for 17 seasons and went on to coach the Vancouver Canucks for two years. This is his first year with the Sockeyes. The host club, the Humboldt Broncos, wound out the four representatives to this year's Centennial Cup. The Broncos, for the second straight year, were runaway winners of the Saskatchewan Amateur Junior Hockey League, this year compiling the second best winning percentage of any Junior A team in Canada. The Broncos routed the Manitoba champion Selkirk Steelers in four games to win their Western semifinal and then fell to Richmond in their grueling seven-game series for the Abbott Cup. Bernie Lynch is finishing his fourth season as coach and general manager of the Broncos. Lynch guided the Broncos to the longest overall winning streak in the Saskatchewan Junior League of 16 games and led the team to 17 consecutive victories in the playoffs. Centennial Cup hockey on STN will continue in a moment. This has been some year for snow. Good luck getting to work this morning. For the last 20 years, Toyota four-wheel drive has been getting Canadians where they have to go. And today, with more models than ever, Toyota means four-wheel drive like nobody else. Who could ask for anything more? Toyota! Is this a private party or can any store crash? So, no, 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 is irresistible. But this is more modern than, 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 than. <laughs> You said the P word. <laughs> so, what I want to know is if you're drinking Coke, who's drinking Pepsi? You said the if you can't beat it, catch the wave. Coke. <laughs> We've completed 20 minutes of play here at the Uniplex in Humboldt. The Richmond Sockeyes leading the host Humboldt Broncos 2-0 in this 1987 Centennial Cup Canadian Final. My guest is Howie Stevenson, who is the director of junior hockey for the CAHA. Uh, Howie, uh, we expected a close checking game coming into tonight's game, and that's just what we've seen, and, and some good goaltending at both ends as well. Yeah, I, you know, talking to the... Uh teams and the membership around here we sort of expected this uh, even though the, the game I saw between these two teams the other night was a little lopsided um, the game tonight like everything that's gone on before really doesn't matter and the game tonight has to be close checking and that's the way they started and and uh, just a couple of breaks have resulted in the two goals but they were excellent goals uh, both in the same same corner of the net in the lower right hand corner and and they were just excellent goals, and that's just how hockey goes. All right, Howie, the humble organization that put together this 1987 Centennial Cup had roughly a year or so to prepare to host this event, and from all indications, it looks like it's gone really well. That's true, Rob. Actually, it's a, it's a year uh, next weekend. Uh, they've done an excellent job. This is our third year uh, at this type of venture. Uh, Junior A Hockey, uh, as a group, have taken this this format on and, and tried to run it on their own either by a league or a team or an association in the different parts of Canada and uh, as you say it's the third year and, and nothing but compliments for the uh, the Humboldt Bronco organization uh, it's going to be tough to uh, to top this in the Pembroke area next year all right Howie one final question a lot of team a lot of people seem to think that maybe this format with the four teams is okay but there should be a change maybe to involve two Western teams since the majority of junior A teams in Canada are in the West well this this is true I understand there will be some discussion at our annual meeting in Charlottetown in, in a week's time but uh, uh, junior council I've been there six years and I know they're always prepared to sit and, and discuss uh, and any problems or any suggestions other areas of Canada might have, and I'm sure they will be interested in discussing this in Charlottetown. All right, thanks very much, Howie Stevenson, Director of Junior Hockey for the CAHA. The Centennial Cup on STN will continue in a moment. period have given the Richmond Sockeyes a 2-0 lead over the Humboldt Broncos and this is the Centennial Cup Championship game for 1987. Well, that first period, some great goaltending early for the Sockeyes. 
got the team going a little bit, and then finally late in the stands, they get some offense underway, Jay Boyd, and they have a 2-0 lead. I think they expect a good goaltending from Frank Romeo, and he certainly played well in that first period. The shot's on goal, by the way, 16-7 to for the Humboldt Broncos. A little bit frustrating, too, for the Broncos, I would think, having that big shot total and yet nothing to show for it. No goals, and out of 16 shots, they had a lot of chances, and good chances. Not long shots, they were right in. A lot of good chances. Romeo did the job. Romeo, I has done the job for them all season long. I understand that the Humboldt team doctor is taking a look at Frank Romeo at this time. As far as an injury situation goes, that could be a key for Rich. Well, he had a bad knee coming in. And, of course, in the first period, he was hit on the neck with a stick. So I don't know what they're looking at, but he did have the bad knee coming into the game, and that could be important as this game goes along. Well, certainly the goaltending was the big point, and Romeo made a number of big saves in the contest, and here's a look at him. I think he had to do a lot of work early. The Broncos with a lot of early chances, and this is one that's coming up, and you will notice the puck gets centered out here, and across he comes, got the toe out on the puck, made the save, and then smothered it up in the crease, and that's what he did the entire first period. The goals here, two goals for the Sockeyes in the first period. I believe this is the first one coming up by Tomlinson. You'll see him with the puck now behind the net. He got out in front, sort of to the side. Tomlinson, number 11, got it by Hofford on the backhand. That was the first goal for the Sockeyes, 16-53 of the first period. Got them off to a good start, a 1-0 lead. And just about a minute and a half later at the 18-13 mark, back they come again. Here's Jason Phillips, three goals in the first four games of this tournament. There's number four. Beat Hofford cleanly. And a good goal score can make those plays. And certainly, as we saw, the shot just inside the post. Bruce Hofford maybe was busy making the moves out there. But when you get a shot like that with that kind of accuracy, very tough for any goaltender to make the save. Hofford is a good goaltender. The two that got by him. And, you know, I would think the Broncos have a big task. They've got to really work hard here early in period two. They have to get the jump. We mentioned that they would have a power play starting the second period for a minute and nine seconds still. No more. Bill McDougall was given a penalty for cross-checking at the 20-minute mark of that first period, so the Broncos don't have the power play. Centennial Cup Hockey on STN will continue in just a moment. Guys on the ice, the goaltender apparently all right. After an injury threat, the first intermission, a 2-0 Richmond Sockeye lead over the Humboldt Broncos in the championship game of the 1987 Centennial Cup. Well, the Richmond Sockeyes did exactly what they wanted to do, and that was get the lead in this hockey game. And they played what I would say is a pretty good road hockey game. You get outshot a little bit, but you don't have much to prove when you're playing in somebody else's building. The big thing to do is just control it the way you want. I think they played an excellent first period. You know, when you're playing on the road, you don't have to entertain the fans. That's not your job. Sometimes the hometown team feels like they have to do so. The Sockeyes not worried about that at all. They're worried about winning the hockey game, and they're off to a good start with that 2-0 lead. Well, Orland Curtinback, the coach of the Sockeyes, said he wanted his team to show some composure out on the ice. The team did, and they haven't taken on three deal penalties. The penalties were split even. By the way, at the 20 minute mark of the first period, the Broncos were assessed a minor penalty. Bill McDougall and a scuffle right at the end of the period was tapped with another infraction, so McDougal goes to the penalty box. There'll be no power play for Humboldt at the start of the second period. Both sides will play a man short, so it'll be a four-on-four -four situation. Those kind of penalties when you're on a power play really hurt a hockey club, and Bernie Lynch will probably try to stress that to his players here early. I think Bernie Lynch may have had a few words for his players in the dressing room at the end of the first period. So they'll go four on four, two nothing. Richmond leads as we get set to start the second period of play. Shyak and Rahorchak, along with Clark and Bergen for the Broncos. It'll be Kozak, Phillips, Dickey, and Chensik for Richmond. Referee Rob Fair, Regina drops the puck and play is underway in the second period as Bergen takes over. Brad Bergen ahead to Clark. Get over the blue line, offside on the right side. He is Duncan Rahorchak, just six seconds into the second. Got to believe the Broncos are going to do everything they can to get something going, get some fire underneath them, and hopefully add some inspiration to the play. I think they'd like to get something going very early in this period. They're playing four skaters aside now. A lot of room on the ice, a lot of room for a guy like Brad Bergen. Bucket center ice as Neil Clark breaks in. The long shot to flex off Trevor Dickey and all the people here in the Uniplex, and there's plenty of them. They have to duck into the crowd. And ducked that puck. It almost uh, nailed him pretty good as uh, that goes. And when you got a big crowd like this in a building, a lot of people are a little unfamiliar with that type of situation. They had to get out of there in a hurry. Packed house at the Uniplex tonight, Roger. Really good to see. Good for Junior A hockey. They've drawn very well throughout the week for the Centennial Cup as well. Just inside that Richmond blue line comes the faceoff. Just 11 seconds gone here in the second period. Jason Phillips, one of the goal scorers in tonight's hockey game, wants to come in to take the face. 
stop. He wins it as the puck comes to center ice. And Brad Bergen plays it back for Neil Clark. Clark shoots it in as Frank Romeo deflects it into the corner. After it is Trevor Dickey. He's beaten to the puck by Rohor Chuck. Stan Chensick plays it to the blue line. Neil Clark keeps it in for Shyak. Shyak puts the puck deflect off his skates. And it goes right to Frank Romeo, who hops on it for a faceoff. Romeo obviously all right, as though he moves around his crease rather well, and not, appar not apparently hurting very much after the injury situation, whatever that was at the end of the first period. As we said, he had the bad knee coming in, but you know, the Sockeyes have a pretty good backup goaltender as well, Jamie Stewart. He's played two games in the tournament and played very well. Yep, Broncos got six by him the other night, but really not his fault as they were simply out hustled to Richmond Club. Into the slot, the puck stolen by Matt Hervey. As Richmond tries to break out of their own end, now Stan Chensek will get the opportunity, and he moves to center ice. Chensek inside the blue line, drop pass to Hervey. He moves around Shyak. Hervey to the right of the Bronco goal, drops it behind the net, and Neil Clark will now pick it up. Veteran defenseman for the Humboldt Broncos, Neil Clark. Richmond goes to a power play in 15 seconds. Conclusion of their penalty to Claring Bull. Kozak takes it at center for the Sockeyes, walks inside the Bronco blue line, and they whistle it down on the offside, and just six seconds now left in Claring Bull's penalty. Broncos will be faced with a penalty-killing situation. First period scoring summary up on the screen now. Two goals for Richmond Tomlinson with the first at 16.53, and of course Phillips with the second at 18.13, both with their fourth goals. Six seconds time, of course, Richmond with a chance maybe to build up a 3 nothing lead. That would be very deadly. It's bad enough, too, but three would be very tough for the Broncos to come back on as Chamberlain chases after the puck in the Richmond zone. They'll battle for it. Chamberlain along with Rutherford. They kick it around a little bit, try to move it free. Robbie Fair, finally, the referee has to blow it down. The penalty is over to Claring Bull. Only Bill McDougall sits in the box, and there's 44 seconds left to go in his minor penalty. And the Sockeyes will use that power play see what they can do to build on this 2-0 lead. Tomlinson, the team's leading scorer, also has a goal in tonight's hockey game. Leading scorer in the regular season is out there with Claring Bull, Rutherford, Hervey, and Rutledge. Matt Hervey plays the puck in his own end. Behind his net, 35 seconds left to go. And McDougall, the puck is cleared off the stick. Hervey loses his stick. Luke tries to move it inside the Richmond zone, but loses possession, and now it's Claring Bull clearing it away to safety. Now Bukowski, leading to the puck by Tomlinson and has played down into the Broncos zone. Rob Rice tries to get it. He feeds it around the boards. Chamberlain with a chance to clear and Curtis Chamberlain puts it up high to center ice. Just 10 seconds left now in McDougal's penalty. Matt Hervey walks inside the Bronco end, feeds it to the slot, stolen by Novikowski and he clears it down into the Richmond zone. Frank Romeo plays it for Mike Clearing Ball as McDougal's penalty comes to an end. Even strength now, the Broncos and the Sockeyes. Rice plays the puck all the way down inside the Richmond zone, and Romeo leaves it for Stan Chensick, the defenseman. Quickly headmans the puck. Center ice now. Dean Rutledge can't pick it up. Shyak steals and shoots it back to the Richmond blue line. Claring Bull knocked off the puck by Shyak, and McDougal just fails to pick it up as Mike Gaber turns back. Gaber for Humboldt shoots it in. Sockeyes. Stan Chensick plays it up the boards. Now Rutledge cannot clear as Leonard Esau is there to knock it down. Chensick goes after it again. Stan Chensick. For Richmond, it's two minutes and 35 seconds of elapsed in the second period. It's still two to nothing in favor of the Richmond Sockeyes, the Western Canadian champions here in 87, trying to become the Canadian champs. Up the center, Tomlinson takes over and wheels back towards the Richmond zone. A long shot goes high over the goal on the end boards, and Brad Bergen's back there to pick it up for Humboldt. Bergen has great skating ability, and he uses it at center ice. The long feet off the stick of McDougal inside the Richmond zone. Gaber can't play it. Loose into the corner. Gaber bumps along with a Richmond player, gets it back towards Leonard Esau, and Esau keeps it in. Richmond kicks it ahead, however, and Jim Gunn gets it up to Tony Bobbitt. Bobbitt for Richmond. Walks inside the Broncos zone, tries to get around. Brad Bergen cannot, and Shyak will pick it up. Shyak rolls it around the end boards. Gaber kicks it loose for McDougal, and he comes to center. On top of him in a hurry is Tony Bobbitt. McDougal cannot beat the Sockeye defense, and the Broncos have to pick it up in their own end once more. Brad Bergen to Mike Gaber at center. Gaber walks inside the Richmond zone. Now it's McDougal trying to cut away from Trevor Dickey, and McDougal draws a penalty as Dickey knocks him to the ice. Referee Rob Fair will make the call. It'll be a hooking call to Trevor Dickey at three minutes and 41 seconds. The Broncos with another power play. Another chance for the Broncos to get back in this game. They're down two goals. With the man advantage, though, 
Bernie Lynch will send out the power play unit. Once again, here comes Rob Rice, and I believe once again, Roger, he is playing up front. McDougal knocked down, and he uses his big speed to get around Dickey. Dickey's forced to put the hooks on him and grabs him and knocks him to the ice, and the penalty call made. Very familiar in Humboldt. The beach ball is on the ice. Maybe they're trying to incite a goal as Dickey goes on for holding. That's our first beach ball tonight. Should the Broncos score, though, I think you'll see a bunch. We do any business on beach balls in this community throughout the course of the season. Billy McDougal, Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League. Scored here on the faceoff of the Broncos. The Prince Albert Raiders, of course, as we mentioned earlier. One of the Saskatchewan teams to win the Centennial Cup four times. Late 70s. A long shot by Clark to flex wide off loop. The net comes off. It's boring. And they'll blow the whistle on a faceoff. Mentioned the Raiders. Weyburn also winning in 84. Humble Broncos trail this one 2 0, but they'd like to become the next Saskatchewan team to claim a Centennial Cup championship. That comes off its mooring quickly. The lines went in there to put it back where it belongs. Clark with a sneaky quick shot from the point. Goes all the way to the goal, and Kevin Luke would like to have deflected that on net instead of wide, but could not. The winning the faceoff is a key, and that time McDougal did it. And the faceoff again is in the Richmond Sock high end. The Broncos will try and draw it back to the point, I would imagine. Brad Bergen on the right side. They dropped the puck unfairly, and Kozak's chase from the circle. I think he even knocked the puck out of the hands of Lions from Brad Davis as he was right there ready to drop the puck, and quickly with his stick, Kozak just slapped the puck out. Luke on the faceoff, gets it back, tries to move in, the shot goes wide. Rebound for Rob Rice. He can't play the puck as he's tied up. Chensik loses it, it comes in front. Romeo makes the save as Luke gets in there trying to find a rebound, and he's knocked away quickly by Bill Hardy of Richmond. No rebound to be had is Romeo, who doesn't give up many. That's one of the things the Bronco players pointed out to me earlier. He's good on those rebounds, not allowing him to come back out again. But once again, Romeo got up very, very slowly after being knocked down in his crease. He had the bad knee coming in, and he's taking a bit of a beating in this game tonight. He's been knocked down a couple of times. Kevin Luke at the side of the net, waiting for the puck to come out. It came right, it came right in front of the net. Luke was slamming away at the puck, trying to just jam it in, but couldn't. As a result, they froze it for a whistle. 14 seconds off the penalty. Draw to the point. Bergen shot whistles wide and back now to Neil Clark. Clark holds it in deep behind the net for McDougal. He tries to get it in front, loses the puck, gets it back now as Luke cannot pick it up. To the blue line, Clark can't hold it in. Center ice and Kevin Luke will play it for Humboldt. Back to Brad Bergen. Bergen shoots it inside the Richmond end of the rink. Jensen rips it around the glass, off an arm, center ice, two on one. Richmond comes back, Phillips along with Kozak. Phillips moves in, the shot and the save. The rebound just rolls wide off Brad Bergen as the Sockeyes came dangerously close to going up 3-0 with a short-handed goal. McDougal to center ice, up to Kevin Luke, back to Bill McDougal. He tries to get hold of the puck. Now it comes to Neil Clark, to Bergen. One minute left to go on the power play as they shoot it in. Claring will clears it to the line, but not out. McDougal walks into the slot. Tries to move away from some on rushing sockeyes to the point. Long shot. It's tipped in front. Luke with the chance. He can't let him go. Now Bergen clears it in deep. The chance in front of the flex wide as Kensick will clear. All the way down inside the Broncos zone. 40 seconds of the power play. Bergen comes back. Broncos coming close to drawing five. Here's Bergen at center. He races down to the Richmond blue line. Brad Bergen. Feeds it in front, and Romeo just deflects it away. McDougal gets it back to the point to Jordy Wingate. His long shot goes right to the stick of Steve Jakes. He easily clears it down into the Broncos' zone. So very close for the Humboldt Broncos. Still the score in this game tonight. Jordy Wingate for Humboldt with just 15 seconds left in the power play. Ahead to Chamberlain. Curtis Chamberlain knocks it down, but Claring Bull will steal. Slap it off the boards, and Bergen has to get it in his own end. There's five seconds left in Trevor Dickey's penalty as Chamberlain picks it off. He feeds it ahead for McDougal, who's been out there for the entire power play. It looks like he needs a change. Penalty is over with Horchuk. In now to Wingate, and Wingate tries to walk it in deep. Feeds it behind the Richmond goal. And goaltender Frank Romeo just plays it away to the point. Leonard Esau keeps it in. Esau tries to move away from Dean Rutledge. Does Esau feeds it back behind the net. Rohorchuk is tied up in front by Jakes. Wingate holds it in, a long shot to flex up high. Chamberlain into the corner, feeds it back to Rohorchuk. To the point again, Wingate's long shot. It comes loose and Dickey takes it and goes to center ice with it. Long feed misses Dean Rutledge and Esau just clears it into the player's box. Centennial Cup Hockey on SDN will continue in a moment. Broncos had a good chance here late. A short-handed situation. 
situation. A shot by Jason Phillips right there. Bruce Hoffer to make the save, and it was almost kicked into the net by Brad Bergen. And what the Broncos don't want to do, or didn't want to do there, was give up a shorthanded goal, Roger, and go down by three. Ouch, those shorthanded goals do hurt, especially if you're trailing by two. Fortunately, as far as the Broncos are concerned, the puck just deflected wide at the goal post. 2-0, the Richmond Sockeyes laid there, inching closer to a Centennial Cup championship with the Broncos being unable to come back. Rob Rice plays it at his own end. Up around the boards to Garnet Kazook. He catches up to it and moves to center. Kazook shoots it into the Richmond zone. Tony Bobbitt steals, gets it to Novikoski at center for Humboldt, and he gives it to Rob Rice. Rice will just shoot it in. Off Chensik, and it rolls wide. That was a dangerous play as Chensik inadvertently tipped the puck, deflected it near his own goal. Moeller off the stick of Bobbitt, now down into the Humboldt zone. Rice is bumped off the puck. Moeller plays it behind the goal. Brett Stewart cannot clear it safely. He goes back after to get up now to Kazook. Arnett Kazook can't clear. Now he does roll it to the blue line. Moeller checked up. Kazook takes over. Flips it to center ice for Kevin Luke. He and Brett Stewart break down for the Richmond line. Stewart feeds it across now for Kazook. He's being harassed by Moeller. Kazook falls down right in front of the referee. And Bob Fair just watched it. They got the call there. It shouldn't have been. As Bobbitt moves it to center, he takes a stick from Novikoski. And the puck is cleared in for the Broncos zone. Here comes Kevin Luke back for Humboldt at center. Fires it off the glass and inside the Richmond end. Frank Romeo not nearly as busy in the second period as he was in the first. Leaves it for his defense and Richmond calmly clears it down into Humboldt's end of the rink where Leonard Esau races after it. Esau with the puck. To Brad Bergen, back to Esau, some forechecking, causing a problem, some, some problems for the Broncos as far as mobility out of their own end goes. And Bergen now has some room and comes to center. Brad Bergen for Humboldt, clears it to the line off Matt Hervey's glove and comes loose for Corey Belitsky, and Belitsky shoots it in the Richmond end. Frank Romeo leaves it behind the net as Greg Nelson tries to cause some problems. Nelson almost steals. It comes to the blue line. Bergen shot. Deflects off a player. Center ice. Bill Hardy can't break away for Richmond as he nearly had a two-on-one chance. Now Jason Phillips locks inside the Humboldt zone. Phillips plays it into the slot area, but Belitsky takes over. Corey Belitsky to center ice for Wingate. Taken, however, by Kozak. Finally, Leonard Esau plays the loose puck in center. But it goes harmlessly back to Richmond. Bill Hardy. Feeds a puck high slot, stolen by Nelson, and here come the Broncos finally at center ice, play a little scrappy all of a sudden. Kalitsky can't fit it across as Claring Bull steals, and now Kozak comes back for Richmond to Mike Claring Bull. Claring Bull walks into the Humboldt zone, feeds it to the slot, the shot deflects wide, and now Tomlinson takes over again into the slot. Claring Bull shot, great save, rebound rolls wide as Bill Hardy had a great chance. And here's Dave Shyak breaking back at center for Humboldt. Shyak joined by Greg Nelson. Shyak walks into the slot and they blow it down on the offside as Greg Nelson was about a half step over the line. Centennial Cup Hockey on STN will continue in a moment. After the second period, Broncos still trail at 2-0 as a little debris being picked up behind the Richmond net. Goes under Frank Romeo helping out the linesman. Another opportunity for Richmond just going wide as they control the pressure in that Humboldt zone just before the play, uh, play is A Couple of chances there, Roger. Both times, though, Hoffert making the save. And it remains 2-0. Broncos gain possession. At center ice, Leo Clark's long shot. Romeo just deflects it into the corner. Gaber goes after along with Trevor Dickey. Mike Gaber can't get the puck. Now it's cleared out front, and Dean Rutledge has a little trouble in playing at the center ice. Ahead for Paul Rutherford, but he falls down, and Novikoski gets it back to Shyak, who shoots it down inside the Richmond zone only briefly as Trevor Dickey quickly clears it to center ice. Neil Clark, a little trouble playing the puck. Stolen by Rutledge. Rutledge walks inside the Broncos zone around Clark. He moves to the corner, tries to feed it in front, but Novikoski's there to steal. He loses the puck in front, and finally Shyak tips it back to his defenseman. Novikoski, on his knees, was in a little bit of trouble and had to clear it up into the crowd for a whistle. Sometimes when you do that, fire the puck up into the crowd like that, you're nailed with a two-minute minor for delay of game two. Novikoski getting away with that one. A uh, big part of this hockey game, maybe the Broncos on the power play. They're 0 for 4 so far. They have the best power play record in the Centennial Cup round robin, but not tonight. The Sockeyes have taken a lot of penalties this week at the Centennial Cup. They have had a lot of practice killing them off. And it's shown the practice has taken hold. possession back to Hervey shot whistles wide and Rahorchuk cannot clear as Claring Bull knocks it down into the middle of the ice it comes and now Chamberlain center ice feed onto the stick of Rahorchuk he can't quite hold on as he breaks
Hornchuk down to the sockeye end. The Hornchuk taken off the puck by Terry Bowen. There'll be another penalty to the Richmond Sockeyes. Mike Claringball hauled down Duncan Rahorchuk. And now the Broncos get another chance, their fifth. Their fifth of the game. They're 0 for 4, as we saw just a minute ago. Once again, a beach ball comes on the ice tonight. Of course, if the Broncos do manage to score with this manpower advantage, we will see a lot of beach balls come down. Here's the penalty now. You'll see Rahorchuk breaking in on the right side. He is hauled down from behind. They don't really have control of the puck either, Roger, when he was hauled down. But he was going towards the net in a potential scoring situation, according to Rob Ferrer. He just stuck up the arm, and off the ice goes. Number three, Mike Clary, will his second penalty of the game, this time for hooking. And the Broncos will go to the power play. It's something a little different for Coach Bernie Lynch and the Broncos. They go to a different power play unit to start it off this time. Chamberlain, Rohorchuk, and Johansson will get a chance at it. Maybe just a little shake up by Bernie Lynch trying to get this power play going. You have to try and get something going. Half the game is gone. You haven't scored a goal yet. You're down in the championship final, 2-0. Time to shake something, shake it up and try something different. Johansson, Chamberlain, along with Rohorchuk, Wingate, and Bergen. Kozak, Jensen, and Dickey for Richmond. And off the face off, they move it right against the boards, and quickly it's whistled down five seconds into the power play. You get the feeling Coach Lynch may be sending a bit of a message. Curtis Chamberlain on the ice, the captain of the Broncos, a hard worker. Maybe he thinks hard work's the only way this club's going to get a goal. Well, Chamberlain has played well. He is one of the hardest workers on the team, and he is a favorite of Bernie Lynch. Off the face off, Broncos to the point. It's Bergen's shot, whistles high and wide. Back to Wingate. Wingate clears it deep behind the goal to Rahorchuk. Rahorchuk cannot play it. Comes loose to Bill Hardy. He gets a good chance to clear. Makes no error as he shoots at the center ice. And Wingate has it. 20 seconds gone on the penalty. Drops it now to Brad Bergen. Bergen being pressured by Hardy. Up to Chamberlain in over the blue line. He clears it deep. Dickey with a chance to clear, but can't as Bergen keeps it in. Feeds it wide for Chamberlain, but Chamberlain takes it in the corner. He battles along with Chensick for the puck. Again, some good work by Johansson to clear it. Johansson and Chamberlain continue to battle for the puck. Hardy steals it and shoots it in for the Broncos zone for the Sockeyes. 115 left to go on the mad advantage. Broncos get a couple of changes as Bergen comes down inside the Richmond zone. Brad Bergen walks into the slot, has possession of the puck. Bergen tries to move away. Looking for someone to feed the puck to. Feeds it across and puts the score! seconds. Curtis Chamberlain, Brad Bergen will garner one assist on the play. As he fed it in front, the Broncos hold a little team meeting as they continue to clear debris off the ice. Here in Humboldt, there's programs, there's beach balls, Don Clark and Bernie Lynch trying to get that motivation back to going. Bronco player box. Certainly, if that doesn't get the team into the game, nothing will. Well, they should be back into it now. They're just down by one. Still a half a hockey game to play. 9-13 remaining in the second period. And there's Curtis Chamberlain, the captain of the Broncos. And what a big goal that bounced in off of him. Now Frank Romeo comes out of his net, and his team gives him some encouragement. As the officials finally have things cleared up here in Humboldt. 2-1 game. Richmond Sockeyes leading the Humboldt Broncos. Championship game of Centennial Cup 87 here in Humboldt. Feeds it ahead to the Richmond line. Shyak clears it in. Now Matt Hervey will get it. 
Irving just feeds it to center. Clark loses possession of the puck and comes away. Shyak tries to drop it in, loses it, and it's just picked up by the Richmond Sockeyes. They clear it to center. Novikoski bumped by Rutherford, and now McDougal gets it off the stick of Shyak down into the Richmond zone. And Matt Hervey gains possession of it. Hervey for Richmond. Moves slowly out of his own end. Long feed to center. Misses Dean Rutledge, and that'll be an icing call. No one was even close, and the Broncos are going to really try to take it to him at this point. Centennial Cup Hockey on STN will continue in a moment. Here's another look at what just happened. It's now McCoskey bumped hard at that Bronco bench by Rutherford as they hit it getting intense. Both teams playing the body tonight. That's what they did when they played each other in the Western Final, and that is also what they did in the round-robin game. So I think we can expect a little more tonight. Not only the Broncos moving a little better, a little more noise from the throng here in Humboldt. A goal tends to do that to the hometown fans. Get some going. It's the best medicine. Behind the net, Claring Bull takes it in his own end for the Sockeyes to Matt Hervey. Up now to Dean Rutledge as he's bumped by Rob Rice. Brett Stewart keeps it in with a long shot that goes wide. Luke tries to pick it up. Stolen by Kazokin. But the shot is deflected away as now Rice takes it and clears it back behind the net. Luke is tied up by Claring Bull. Rutledge picks it off and clears it to center ice where Brett Stewart gets it. Stewart for Humboldt in his own end, being harassed by Tomlinson, gets it to center ice. Comes away now to Leonard Esau. Esau loses the puck, gets it up ahead to Luke. He misses Stewart with a pass, breaking it after this. Kazuki tries to split the defense. The puck is loose in front, and it comes away to the Sockeyes. They clear it right onto a Bronco, but Kevin Luke can't find it. Now Brett Stewart goes after. Good for checking by Humboldt. They try to work the puck loose behind the net. It comes to Kazuki. In front of the net, the shot deflects up high. Romeo can't play it. Down by a high stick, but the Sockeyes will pick it up. It would have been whistled down had Humboldt touched it, however. As Rob Rice gets it back again. Some flurry of action by Humboldt. They clear it inside. The Richmond zone. Kazook shot just off the glove of the net miner. Long shot again. Tips in front wide. Rock goes all over Richmond. Kazook again with a shot. The puck that flips away, and here's Kozak to center. For the Sockeyes, Kozak in over the line, checked up by one Bronco. Two of them fall down into the corner to the right of the Bronco. Net Bergen clears it up. Wingate tries to play it away. Ready Wingate gets it up to Brett Stewart, and Stewart clears it to center where Chensik knocks it down. Stan Chensik shoots it in. Bruce Hofford behind his net. Leaves it for Bergen. Bergen plays it ahead, out to center ice, and Dickey will just shoot it back. This time, however, it goes into the penalty box area for a face-off. But the Broncos certainly have momentum, and they're taking it to the Richmond Sockeyes at this juncture. I think that goal at 10.47 here in the second period by Curtis Chamberlain has got this hockey team going now. Broncos were perfect in the round, Robin, 3-0, they had one blemish in the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League playoffs. That was their first playoff game in the quarterfinals against the Melville Millionaires. They lost here at the Uniplex 2-1 to Melville. So they sailed through the SJHL and sailed through the round, Robin, and trying to get back in this one and sail through this final game. Nelson for Humboldt clears it off a player, but it comes back to Bergen. He gets it back to Greg Nelson. Nelson shoots it in for the Sockeye end. Romeo behind his net, plays it around the boards. Belitsky tries to pick it up. He can as he's taken off the puck. Now Corey Belitsky steals. He can't move it away from a Richmond player. Belitsky in the slot, the shot up high and wide. Good heavy-duty work by Corey Belitsky, forcing a loose puck. The Sockeyes are just forced to clear it down into the Broncos zone. Bergen plays it off the glass. It's knocked down by a glove. Chensick will get it and shoot it back to the Bronco line where Neil Clark picks it up. Clark for Humble, box inside. The Richmond zone, Clark tries to play it through, high in the slot, a chance for Bulitsky, but he can't get the backhand away. Tony Bobbitt will take it for Richmond, and the Brock and the Sockeyes have been relegated to just clearing it down to the Humble zone in the last couple of minutes, just to alleviate pressure. Avakoski to center ice, onto the stick of bucket, Rahorchuk, Rahorchuk. Into the Richmond zone, tries to clear it through. It comes in front of the left, the chance rolls wide. As right there was Joey Johansson trying to capitalize on an excellent pass by Rahorchuk. Continue to pour it on. Johansson walking right in. Just tried to deflect it by goaltender Frank Romeo. And what a play by Rahorchuk. Rahorchuk has been, do been doing that all through the Centennial Cup final. Rahorchuk probably playing his best hockey of the year. Centennial Cup hockey on SDN will continue in a moment. Duncan Rahorchuk is a catalyst. Threw it out in front. Good chance for the just goes a little wide, and Romeo gets the glove down on it. 2-1, Richmond leading Humboldt, 6 one left to go in the second period. Johansson stays out with Chamberlain and Rahorchuk. Tomlinson, Ruth Rutledge, and Rutherford. 
Rutherford for Richmond. Behind the net, Matt Hervey takes it away for the Sockeyes to Rutherford. Puck to center ice. Johansson knocks it down, picks it up off Rob Rice. It goes up high over the glass and into the crowd. And you would think the Sockeyes really want to slow this game down. It's really been going in one direction. Well, since the goal, since the goal from Chamberlain, the Broncos have taken over. The first half of this period, even. The Broncos on a roll right now. They're looking for that tying goal. Here it is, 1987, 1971. The first Centennial Cup went to the Red Deer Rustlers of the Alberta Junior Hockey League. Sockeyes forced to just clear it again down in the Humboldt zone. They wave off. Icing Nowakowski will play it behind his own net. Drops it now for Rice. Up the boards for Ora Horchuk. He tries to tip it out. Can't. Kept in by clearing. Bull long shot. And Hoffert lets it go wide of the goal. Dean Rutledge puts it behind the net. For Rutherford, Rutherford for the Sockeyes, taken off the puck, ahead to the blue line. The Broncos can't clear. It's kept in. Rutherford has possession. He moves it to the corner. Tomlinson makes a couple of nice moves into the high slot. Tomlinson to Hervey, and Hervey can't pick it up. He lets a weak shot go, but it's just deflected wide by the netminder. Rohrchuk at center with Chamberlain, a two-on-one, but Rohrchuk didn't know it. Chamberlain goes down and through the Richmond zone. Rocks around behind the net, right on top of him. It's clearing ball. Curtis Chamberlain drops it back, continues to work after the puck. McDougal circling in front of the net, but Chamberlain forced to tie it up for a whistle. The Horchuk at the end of his shift and an opportunity on a two-on-one. Jay, I don't think he really knew Curtis Chamberlain was with him. I don't think he did either, Roger, because if he could have gotten the pass over to Chamberlain, Chamberlain was all in home free on Romeo. A little more work by Bernie Lynch in that Humboldt player's box. A lot of things to continue. There's Curtis Chamberlain. What a game he's enjoyed. The only goal for the Broncos. And every time he's on the ice, something seems to happen for Humboldt. He played three years in the Western Hockey League with the Saskatoon Blades, a native of Flin Flon, Manitoba. His father was the president of the Flin Flon Bomber Hockey Club up there. Chensing takes it in his own end. Feeds it up to the blue line, out to center ice. Leonard Esau knocks it back. McDougal takes it at center. He has a man breaking. It's Shyak. Shyak tries to clear it in. He's bumped off the puck. Esau again will shoot it up. Comes off a stick and a player. And Esau gets it once more. Steps on something, falls down, has to give it to Bergen. Brad Bergen winds up. Romeo deflects it into the corner. Gaber plays it back to the blue line, but it's deflected by Gaber. Down again. Behind the net, now to McDougal. He loses the puck. Kozak takes it. McDougal trying to check up a Sockeye player. Trevor Dickey clears it into the crowd. And again, the Sockeyes, out of desperation, having trouble in their own end, is clearing it out. Centennial Cup Hockey on STN will continue in a moment. Pressure's on the sock, guys. Goaltender Frank Romeo has to come up big. Romeo had the angle. Bergen got the shot away. A good hard shot up high. Romeo was there and made the easy save. Rocco still trying to pour it on. Since the goal by Chamberlain at 10.47. On the second period. Cut the margin to one. Two to one. Richmond leading humble. Bill Hardy. Brett Stewart on the faceoff. Broncos lose possession. Luke can't play it. Here's Jason Phillips to center ice. Phillips to Brian Kozak. Kozak for Richmond and into the slot. The shot deflects off. Bergen right to Phillips. Back to the point. Dickey holds it in. The shot deflects wide again. This, this time it's Richmond pouring on some pressure. Kozak behind the net. Can't play it. Stewart goes after it. He beats Phillips to the puck. Gets it up the wall for Kevin Luke. Luke tied up nicely by Dickey. Slot area. The pass comes and it goes right through. Kozak is forced to turn around. He feeds it in front of the net. It goes right by Bergen. Around the boards again. Broncos try to pick it up and get it out. They lose possession of it now. Kevin Luke with a chance to clear. Luke just kills, throws it up high. And it goes right to Jason Phillips. He touches the puck. He was knocked down with a glove. But Phillips touched it to negate any whistle. Now Brad Bergen comes back. Bergen flips it down to Frank Romeo. And Romeo, this Richmond goaltender, draws everybody to him, but decides to hold on. And Rob Fair will have a message for the netminder about that. Well, those long shots come in. They can be tricky. And a couple of Broncos on his doorstep, and Romeo wanted to hold on and make sure. And now he wants to adjust some equipment, among other things. Frank Romeo in his net. I'm busy working on that as there'll be penalties on the play. There's Orlando Curtin back looking a little concerned right now. Of course, born in Kedworth here in Saskatchewan. This is his first year with the Sockeyes. A lot of coaching experience, though, Roger. He has coached with the Vancouver Canucks in the NHL and also in the minors. Bergen just flipping it in. Romeo makes the save and decides just to hold on for the faceoff. Into the penalty box, a couple of players go. Trevor Dickey is off for the Richmond Sockeyes, the captain of the club. This is his third penalty to hockey game. Going off. 
timeout for the Broncos. Roughing the call at 1637. Here in the second period. Broncos hold the puck inside the Richmond zone. McDougal has it from behind the net. He tries to work it out front. He's tied up effectively by Muller. Now Claringbull plays it behind his cage. Brian Muller to center ice and Hervey. He's back with Bobbitt. Bobbitt breaks in, tries for the shot. He gets it away. And Bruce Hoffert with a nice save. McDougal takes it. Tries to clear it out of his own end. He's tied up effectively by Muller. He gets it back out of Claringbull. The shot, the save. It's loose in front. And McDougal puts it up and takes it away. Bill McDougal to center eyes, tied up nicely by Claring. Bill McDougal gets it loose for Rohorchuk. Back at Rohorchuk, turns back. Inside the Richmond zone, knocked off the puck, and Bobbitt turns away. Tony Bobbitt for Richmond. Moves it down inside the Humboldt zone. Bobbitt tries to play it in front of the net, but Rob Rice just bumps him off the puck, and Wingate is forced to take over. He gets it back again. Now to McDougal. He can't play the puck to the point. Jensek takes it and rolls it around behind the Bronco goal. One minute left in the coincidental minors. As Rob Rice works it slowly out of his own end onto the skate of McDougal, he's forced to tip at the center ice. McDougal gets it back again. Three on two. McDougal trying to go around Steve Jakes. Almost does. Now he does roll it behind the net. McDougal all by his lonesome there. His teammates on a change in front of Chamberlain. Shot. It goes high and wide. A great play by McDougal to give it to Curtis Chamberlain, but the shot just goes wide. Here's Phillips coming back now for Richmond. Jason Phillips. Into the Humboldt end, eludes a couple of checks, works it high into the slot. Is forced just to dump it into the corner, and Johansson gets it. Joey Johansson to Curtis Chamberlain. Back to Johansson. Inside the Richmond zone, Johansson tries to race around Chensick. Johansson is taken off the puck. It's there to Chamberlain, though. He looks for a man defeated to it, deflects away right to the Sockeyes, however. And Chensick gets it up to Jason Phillips. Phillips inside the Broncos zone. Feeds it now to Kozak. The shot deflects high. Minute 25 left to go in the period as Novikoski plays it behind his net. Penalties are over. Full strength for both sides. Now Novikoski trips and falls. Neil Clark just gets away from a couple of Richmond checkers. As Clark just moves it down into the Richmond zone, coughs it up, and Herbie will pick it up in his own end. Matt Herbie's long pass comes off a stick. Novikoski plays it ahead. It's loose for Tomlinson, and he kicks it into the middle of the ice where Kevin Luke gets it and goes back in his own end. Less than a minute to go now. Here in the second period, Esau's long pass to center. Brett Stewart walks in. The shot and the save by Romeo. The rebound is loose there, but the Broncos can't pick it up. Loose in front of that. Herbie knocked down Stewart as he was trying to find the loose puck. Richmond again just picks it up and clears it down. Half the puck, Dave Tomlinson out racing the Broncos to it. Hoffert is forced to clear it away. Up the ball and comes for Kevin Luke as he works the center ice. Luke along with Brett Stewart and Garnet Kazook. Luke. Tries to feed it deep, but it comes to Phillips. He just picks it up and clears it into the penalty timekeeper's box. 25 seconds left to go in the second period where the Broncos have cut it, have cut it to one. Centennial Cup Hockey at STN will continue in a moment. Chances. Mike Claringbull pulls the trigger, but Bruce Hoffert cuts down the angle, couldn't find the puck, but made the big save anyway. Good save for Hoffert, and the Broncos clear the puck out of their own end immediately after. Just 25 seconds left in the period. As the face off is top of the circle to the left on the Richmond goal. Off the face off, puck is loose. It's cleared out to center ice, and after it is Tony Bobbitt for Richmond. It's whistled down as the puck was gloved ahead from one sockeye player to another. Well, one goal difference, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, that's pretty iffy for any team. This is very, very tight, this hockey game. No room for error. It sets up a good third period here at the 1987 Centennial Cup Championship. How much each team will have left will no doubt have a lot to do with that third period. Chensick with it in his own end for Richmond, clears it off the boards to center. Bergen picks it off. Brad Bergen dumps it in. Coming up to 10 seconds left to go here in the second period. Dickey plays it down into the Humboldt zone. Leonard Esau on a race with Brian Muller for the puck. Esau puts it behind his goal as time will run out of the clock as the buzzer goes to end the second period. Gaber gets up after being bumped into the corner with Tony Bobbitt, but they get up and leave the ice 2-1 to one 
after 40 minutes, still some pushing and shoving. Tony Bobbin and Dave Shyack have words at the end of the period. After two periods of play in the Centennial Cup, the score, Richmond 2, Humboldt 1, will return in a moment. After two periods of play, the Richmond Sockeyes lead the Humboldt Broncos 2-1 in this 1987 Centennial Cup Final. If you've been in the town of Humboldt this week, you know there's two things that are very hard to find. One is this, a Centennial Cup ticket. The other is this, a beach ball, because they come cascading down in torrents every time the Broncos score a goal. Speaking of the town of Humboldt, though, they've done a tremendous job this week of hosting the 1987 Centennial Cup Tournament. With more on the town itself, CFQC Sports Director Kevin Waugh town in Saskatchewan, just over 5,000. It's located 100 kilometers east of Saskatoon, in what is termed the Shercroft District. It's an agriculture-based community serving a very large rural trading area. The humble flour mill leads the way with processing and is the largest mustard contracting firm in Western Canada. The town has equipment manufacturing and is also the site of PAMI. Junior hockey has been a way of life in Humboldt for years. So when the chance of bidding for a national championship came up, the Bronco executive grabbed it. As a matter of fact, we started in October of 85 preparing for our bid, which we submitted to the CHA in May of 86. We uh, went to Montreal, Brent Stebbings, our marketing manager, Bernie Lynch, our head coach and GM, and myself. Um, we went Four days prior to our presentation, um, met and hosted a hospitality suite down there for all the delegates at the meetings, went through our entire proposal with them on a one-to-one -one basis. If you look back now, the completion of the Uniplex in 1982 was a progressive step in Humboldt's growth. The last few months has seen the completion of a new mall on the west side. The businesses now have rallied around the Centennial Cup, knowing it is good for the community. I don't think we've actively approached a single person saying, do you want to give us a hand on this thing? They've come forward to us and said, I want to help. What can I do? And that involves all aspects, everything from being a committee member, maybe being on a subcommittee member, um, things like selling 50-50s or programs, collecting at the door, all those things. But above and beyond that, of course, is putting people in the building. I have to congratulate the people that are responsible for the Centennial Cup. A lot of, a lot of work went into to bringing this uh, to Humboldt and making it run smoothly and, and successfully. Uh, the Humboldt Broncos have given us good hockey all winter. The Centennial Cup, as far as Saskatchewan goes, the Centennial Cup has made people in Saskatchewan aware, aware of where Humboldt is. And uh, hockey-wise, it has made the people across uh, Canada uh, uh, know where Humboldt is. And that's, that's good for the town of Humboldt. Of course, the main focus of the Centennial Cup is to the hockey itself, but it's also a time to honor some of the top Junior A players in all of Canada. Last night, the Humboldt Uniplex was the scene of the Centennial Cup Awards Banquet. On hand is MC STN play-by-play -play man Roger Millions. On hand as guest speaker was one of hockey's most famous play-by-play -play men in Danny Gallivan, the voice of the Montreal Canadiens for 32 years. Heading the all-star contingent was Pembroke goalie Grant Robb. Robb surrendered only 10 goals in the round robin. On defense, Matt Hervey of Richmond scored one goal and added four assists and did the job on the blue line. The other defenseman, Rob Rice of the Humboldt Broncos. Rice got the nod for his consistent play all week. The center, no surprise, Bill McDougall of the Broncos. He fired a tournament-high four goals to go with three assists. On left wing, Jason Phillips of the Sockeyes. Phillips was Richmond's leading scorer with three goals and three assists. And rounding out the All-Stars, Duncan Rahorchuk. Rahorchuk played a huge role in Humboldt's specialty teams. Centennial Cup Hockey on STN will continue in a moment. First two to one after two periods of play at the Uniplex in Humboldt. The name Cartouche is synonymous with hockey in Saskatchewan. My guest is Wayne Cartouche, the president of the Saskatchewan Amateur Junior Hockey League. Wayne, uh, the town of Humboldt and the Humboldt Broncos have represented this league very well at the Centennial Cup this week. 
There's no question. Uh, both on the ice, off the ice, the uh, the activities surrounding the cup and the the total organization. I know all of the teams, all the representative teams from the rest of the country are just marveled at how well things were organized and uh, you know it's tough to to keep teams occupied in a community this size and they've certainly done that and uh, the teams have been most appreciative of what's been going on this week. I know that you are a proponent of maybe a change to this Centennial Cup format and that you would like to see two Western teams because just there are just so many teams in Western Canada. Well this is true we've got over 60 percent of the teams of the Junior A teams in the country in Western Canada and uh, we feel it just uh, has been a disparity for a few years now and maybe it's time we take a look at uh, dividing the West into two regions and the rest of the country into the single region and get two representatives from Western Canada. This is what we're going to be presenting at the CHA uh, annual meeting next week in uh, Charlottetown. As president of the SAJHL 1987-88 uh, shaping up as a big season for your league and that uh, you will be expanding into Minot, North Dakota. That has to be uh, a rare occurrence in junior A hockey in Canada. This is true. I think of only one other place in Bellingham, Washington that was in the BC Junior League. But uh, uh, we're looking forward to mine. It, it looks as though it should be a very, very strong franchise. The team, it'll take a couple of years for them to get uh, competitive with the rest of the league. But I know Kevin Janelle, uh, the, the president and coach of the club, is, has been working hard this past season getting the club ready. And we're very anxious for Minot and the inception of next, uh, next season. Wayne, uh, as a Saskatchewan resident, of course, you're very familiar with the Brad Horning incident. Um, there seems to be a lot of talk now about doing something about the violence in junior hockey. Is that just a cry out of the wilderness that will fade away, or, or is it time maybe that something concrete was done? Well, I think you take a look, especially at the junior A picture over the last couple of years with the inception of the... Uh uh, the stick work uh, and the stick related penalties, the checking from behind, which is the rule that we have been following. Uh, it certainly has uh, improved things at the junior A hockey. There's still a long way to go, but certainly uh, we're confident that no, it's not the cry out of the wilderness, that uh, something will be done. It, it, it is in the process of being done here. I think uh, the big problem comes, uh, or one of the big areas, that one of the big solutions could be if the coaches simply do not tolerate their players checking from behind. They handle uh, 80 to 85 percent of it. I think the officials can catch the rest of it. How long do you think it's going to take for these changes to be to come about if they do? Well, this is our second year where we've been using these rules, the, the stick-related penalties and the checking from behind, and it, it's been working significantly over the last couple of years. It, you know, you're never going to eliminate it completely, but uh, I think we've got it down now where it's controllable level and uh, working on it from there. STN, Centennial Cup Hockey on STN will continue in a moment. It's a day. but Stan Chensek is there to take over and has possession out of his own end. Chensek comes to center ice and dumps it down into the Broncos zone. Bruce Hoffer flips it up for Dave Shyak. Shyak rattles it around the boards in front of the net. A crazy bounce came right out to Jim Gunn in front. A shot and a great save by Bruce Hoffer. Oh, that could be a game saver as Brian Moeller was fed all alone in front of the net by Jim Gunn and Hoffer quick as a cat big save. And what a big save it is, Roger. Just over a minute gone here in the third period. And certainly the Broncos don't want to fall behind by two. Watch this right pad. He kicks it out very fast and there's the save. Could be the save of the game as far as the Broncos are concerned. Broncos still only down by one. They can thank Bruce Hofford. That's going to be a wise decision to pick up this youngster for the Melville Millionaires as they did at the end of the Saskatchewan Junior Playoffs. Broncos pick it up. Ahead to center ice and Garnet Kazook. Kazook shoots it down inside. Richmond's end of the rink. Neil Clark tries to play it back to the point. Kazook shot the flex up high and into the crowd it goes as it went off the blocking pad of Frank Romeo as he skates out of his net. Garnet Kazook had a big game on Wednesday. A couple of goals. That was a big factor in the 6-1 win. As the Richmond Sockeye bench looks on, holding on to their one goal lead. Romeo's been busy, 27 shots by the Broncos as we enter this third period. Off the faceoff, Broncos win the draw. Clark's shot from the point is deflected in front. Brett Stewart tries to play it away. He drops it now. Dickey steals it. Now Stewart takes over. He is tied up. Hook pretty good there by Muller. The puck comes loose behind the net. Taken around the boards. Novakoski tries to hold it in. He does the shot. The flex in front wide. Jenzek tries to clear away. Novakoski plays it and drops it wide of the goal again. 
Dickey wants to clear it out. Clark holds it in. His long shot. Oh, and Kazook lets it go right to the net. He was there in a position to deflect it, but elected not to. And now Stewart plays it ahead. Kazook drops it to the blue line. Chensik takes over. Good forechecking by the Broncos. Has paid off a couple of opportunities. Gunn takes it away from Wingate. And now Richmond clears it in. The Bronco in. Kazook will take it back to center ice. Garnet Kazook. Long shot. A clearing shot right off the ankle of Matt Hervey. And that's smart. Offside is called against Humble, but Hervey's in some pain as he took that right off either the instep or the ankle. I tell you, with 17 and a half minutes remaining here in the third period, you do not want to lose a fella like Matt Hervey because he is an outstanding defenseman. He's moving around on it a little better now, and it looks like he'll stay on the ice. Kazook's got a very good shot, a very hard shot for a little fella, and he lets it go. And Hervey, ouch, he lifts that left leg up in absolute pain. He skates it off, though. It looks like Matt Hervey's ready to go. Broncos will have to chase after it in their own end right off the faceoff. Hoffert leaves it for Leonard Esau, and Esau works it away. Misses his mat. The puck rolls all the way down into the Richmond zone. And good enough for an icing call. As both teams may be a little tentative here in the third period. They were wild in that last 10 minutes of the second period. I'm sure Orland Curtinback wants to cool it down a little bit. Both teams seem to be a little bit frightened, perhaps, in moving the puck. I think they just might be. And one thing I don't think we'll see a lot of here in the third period, penalties. I think Rob Fair might let both teams get away with a little bit. Very well be. That whistle may just disappear. Brad Bergen takes over in his own end for Humboldt. Stuart Horchuk, center ice feed, and Matt Hervey's there to steal for Richmond, and Hervey just floats it down, where Bruce Hoffert leaves it for Brad Bergen. Bergen, in his own end, comes slowly to center ice, a long feed, Hervey gloves it down, but right to a teammate, and Dave Tomlinson picks it up. Rob Fair saw it all happen, and he just quickly blows it down, and we'll get the face off out at center ice. Centennial Cup Hockey on STN will continue in a moment. the center ice. Duncan Rahorchuk tries to clear it in the Broncos zone. He's effective in that. Herbie after along with Joey Johansson. They tie each other up and Mike Claring is allowed to pick it up. He just rolls it to center ice where Rob Rice gets it. Rice plays it to the neutral area. Finally, Bill Hardy shoots it all the way inside the Broncos zone. Rob Rice goes behind his net. Beats one check. Coughs it up in front. Hardy tries to get it through but it's stolen by Chamberlain to center. He's knocked off the puck by Hardy and they clear it in. It's an offside called against Richmond as one of the Sockeyes was trapped deep inside the Broncos zone. You know, Roger, sore ankle or not, Matt Hervey getting a lot of ice time here in the third period. He gets a lot of ice time right through the game. And he's a guy with a lot of determination. He started his junior career by thumbing a ride from Los Angeles up to Langley, British Columbia. He tried out with the Langley Eagles. He's been playing junior hockey in Canada ever since. Now he's playing for a Centennial Cup. Not bad for a guy from Los Angeles. So be on the beach. He chose the ice instead. Broncos clear it in. To the Sockeyes, and Trevor Dickey has trouble with the puck, but just gets it away from Mike Gaber. Up ahead is Chensik and center ice. Stan Chensik walks inside the Humboldt zone, tries to move it in front of the net. Chensik working after Bill McDougal's there to steal. McDougal tries to get it up to Shyak, loses possession. Phillips with a chance in front, and he can't convert. Phillips plays it back to the point. Trevor Dickey's long shot almost gets through. Kozak tries to hold it in. Shyak can't pick him up. The long shot deflected by Hoffert wide. Here's Chensik from the side of the net, tries to throw it in front. McDougal knocks it down. It's gloved ahead. But Richmond just getting a hold of the puck. Finally to the line it comes. The Broncos cannot clear. It's deep inside. Humble territory. Kozak gets it in front, but it comes away now to Shyak, and he'll get it to center ice. Missing Gaber, but the puck rolls to the Richmond blue line. Trevor Dickey comes back. Broncos on a change. Bill Hardy inside the Humboldt zone, tries to move it away from Leonard Esau. Phillips goes after Jason Phillips. Slattery from Oler. The shot blocked. And it comes back to Esau. He gets it ahead to McDougal. Up at center ice, Bill McDougal. Walks in, tries to move around. Clearing pull. Do McDougal in front. The chance and rolls just wide as Kazook was in there with Luke looking for the loose puck. It comes away and Bill Hardy takes it for Richmond and decides to clear it out. McDougal causing problems and almost golden opportunity and almost one converted by the Broncos. McDougal lugging that puck down the ice. The Broncos never did get a shot on goal, though. They came close, but to no avail. Centennial Cup Hockey on STN will continue in a moment. Bill McDougal causing all sorts of problems for Richmond. Trying to get it out in front there to Kevin Luke. 
Well, Gunnar Kazuk was also on the play. The Broncos, though, didn't end up with a shot on goal. Now, yeah, McDougal's dynamite. You just can't give them one second breathing room. So far tonight, Richmond hasn't, but I think he'll get a lot of ice time in the third period. Oh, no doubt. 15 minutes left to go now here in the third. Two to one. Richmond leads. Rice keeps the puck in for Humboldt, but Moeller has a chance to clear. Can't as Rice deflects it away from him. Now it's Jim Gunn trying to get it out of his own end. Moeller again fails to clear. It's cleared back in now for Kazook for Humboldt. Kazook shot from a bad angle. Romeo decides just to snap it up and make the save. He does just that. And we'll get the face off inside the Richmond zone. And I'm sure Frank Romeo would like to see his guys play the puck out of their end a little bit more. The play is in their end right now. Romeo showing a good glove hand there, but yes, the Sockeyes can't sit back and play defense, defense, defense this period. They have to try and get something going themselves because one goal is not very much in a junior hockey game. Richmond takes possession off the faceoff. Matt Hervey shoots the puck out down into the Broncos zone. It crosses the goal line. We're going to have an icing call, and we have another one. And it makes you wonder a little bit with all these whistles if we're seeing some fatigue. Rob Rice, tournament all-star, is getting into our picture. You see look for players, fatigue for coaches, too. Bernie Lynch does look a little tired. The players have to be tired. They started this tournament last Saturday for the Sockeyes. This is their fifth game in the seven-day span. The Broncos playing their fourth. A gentleman in the middle, George DuPont, the leading scorer in Pembroke on the Ontario Junior A Hockey League scoring title this year. McDougal back on the ice, and just as Jay said moments ago, Billy McDougal will see plenty of ice time. Dougal tries to pick up the puck, but Claringville gets there first, clears it around the boards. Gaber knocks it deep to the corner. Bobbitt will pick up. Jordy Wingate on the right side for Dave Shyak. Shyak was hurting entering his hockey game again. Richmond clears it in for an icing call as they couldn't move the puck out of their own end. And it appears that Bernie Lynch has maybe seen enough of, of Dave Shyak. He'd like to have the veteran play, but he's put Jordy Wingate out of the ice. The injury obviously bothering Shyak a little bit too much. Well, with only, well, 14 and a half minutes to go in the third period, you might as well have your healthiest players out there right now, and Dave Shyak, obviously not that healthy. Quick changes now. With Bernie Lynch and Don Clark. Substitute Joe Hansen, Chamberlain, and Rohorchuk. Out for Humboldt. Trying to save all the energy that they can. On the face off, Bergen tees it up the shot, the flicks high. It's just getting a stick on it was Paul Rutherford. Bergen can really let it go, and he had a chance to wind up there, but just to flex off a Richmond stick. Chensick plays it on center ice, drops it now for Trevor Dickey. Dickey decides just to clear it to center. Johansson gets it back and shoots it inside the Richmond zone. Dickey, the captain of the Sockeyes, plays it off the wall, center ice, and Bergen will have to go back after it. Brad Bergen has Curtis Chamberlain in the open. Chamberlain into Johansson, high slot. Johansson has no one there with him to pass the puck to, and Dickey takes him off the puck. Here's a change for the Broncos as a result. Here comes Richmond on a three-on-two that decide just to clear it in for safety's sake. Hoffert leaves it for Leonard Ears. Esau, and Esau is forced to turn around. He clears it around the boards. Duncan Rohorchuk picks it up. Rohorchuk, centerized pass. Chamberlain tries to tip it by the defense. Can't quite do that. Richmond just decides to play the puck at their own blue line. It's Rutherford with it. Oh, Rutherford clears it in. Another icing call. Shot about that seconds ago, but another one. Obviously, the Sockeyes having difficulty getting anything going. They're content to ice the puck right now. I guess they don't want to give up any scoring chances, and they will just dump it, dump it, dump it, and a lot of times it works. Well, it does. It does slow down the attacking hockey club. Forces a lot of whistle stoppages. Of course, if the Broncos can win the faceoffs and the Sockeye end when they get the chance, like they have now, Coaching, big part of this period. Orland Curtinback talking to his charges. 13-23 left to go. In the third period, it remains Richmond 2 and Humboldt 1. Watching the championship game of Centennial Cup 1987 for the Uniplex in Humboldt on STN. Puck's picked up now by the Sockeyes behind the net. Brian Kozak moves away from one check, flips it to the line, kept in by Esau. He can't get a shot away. Now he just throws one into the slot. It's the score! it off, Jay. He will not be a very popular man here at the Uniplex in Humboldt waving that goal up. Fair called it very quickly, though. No goal. Here it comes. Leonard Esau at the point. Just rolls one to the net. It deflects and goes in, but we still have not seen how it deflected into the net. They have disallowed the goal. It didn't pick up the public address.
Sinatra's announcement could have been gloved in. Here's another look at it. The shot from Esau comes towards the net. It deflects off the Bronco player in front of the goal, but it looked inadvertent. Well, Parrish says no goal. I'm not sure what the call was. As you mentioned, we did not pick up the announcement by the PA announcer. Well, it, he does not have the luxury of seeing a couple of replays, and I think that's a, that call very questionable. I have to really wonder about that one a little bit. Perhaps that'll be a big, big call. Second goal of the tournament that has been called back on the Broncos. But it was interesting. The first goal came in Wednesday's final round robin game against the same Richmond Sockeyes, and it seemed to spur the Broncos on. That goal, they called Bill McDougal for being in the crease. Here it is again, a long shot. You see, Romeo is down. I don't think he can see the puck at all. It goes in, and I'm still not sure why it doesn't count, but it doesn't, and well, that's arm, all that matters. Yeah, that's right. The arm movement was made. It appeared to be Kevin Luke made an arm movement, but I don't think he directed it towards the net. Here's Claring Bull walking inside. Rock goes out. He tries for a shot. Can't get it as he's taken off the puck by Rice. Esau goes after it. Slot area of the feed comes, and here's Luke to center. Can't quite pick it up. Now center ice again. Kevin Luke along with Brett Stewart. Feeding it inside the Richmond zone. The puck played to the neutral area. It's taken by Kazook. Kazook tries to walk inside the Richmond zone. He throws it in behind the net. Frank Romeo. And Chensik go after Brett Stewart's deal. Stewart to the point. Esau. The shot gets through, and it's tipped wide. Luke behind the cage, gets it for Kazook, and he can't finally pick it up, and it goes away to Sensek, who just clears it to the center ice, where Bergen will get it. Seven and a half minutes gone. Here in the third, Phillips, all to the ice by Bergen. Bergen gets away with it. Phillips is hurt as he goes back to the Richmond bench. He's very slow to get up. Brad Bergen gets a bit of a break back again. The puck stolen by Tony Bobbitt. He feeds it in for Moeller, and he can't pick it up. Shyak back on the ice again. Cannot clear. Shyak tries to pick up the puck again. Finally, Brett Stewart gets it for Dave Shyak, and he rolls it to center ice as Chensik takes it. Stan Chensik moves inside. The zone, the shot. Great save by Hofford as he gets a blocking pad on it. Shyak plays it to McDougal at center. McDougal moves inside the Richmond guard. McDougal can't get a shot away as Bobbitt knocks him off the puck. Goaltender holds it for a whistle and a face-off inside that Richmond zone. Face-off will come to the left of the Richmond net as Centennial Cup Hockey and STN will continue in a moment. Bill McDougal, deadly as he is, almost gets another chance, but he gets decked on a good check by Tony Bobbitt. Some people may have thought it was a penalty. I thought it was a bad check. Knocked off the puck. I thought it was a good play, too. Defensively, no penalty on the call. I don't think there should have been. I haven't made a mistake yet tonight, have we, as far as calls go? Well, Rob Pierre's doing a good job, too. Clearing ball up the boards. Tomlinson tries to clear it out and does do that. We've played eight minutes and 20 seconds here in the third. Puck almost stolen by Tomlinson off Novikoski's stick, and it comes back to McDougal, and he'll turn back. Bill McDougal for Humboldt to center ice. Eludes one check. Comes to the Richmond blue line and shoots it in. Behind the net it goes. Romeo plays it and leaves it for a teammate. Claring Bull can't pick it up cleanly. Dean Rutledge takes it for Richmond. Rutledge to center ice, long feed. Rutherford goes after it with Shyak. Rutherford breaks in. The chance to shut, he scores! Paul Rutherford, a long clearing pass that Dave Shyak couldn't pick it up. He got in behind Shyak, moved in, and let an excellent backhand go. The Sockeyes regain that two goal advantage. Roger, the defense, the Bronco defense, caught up the ice there. Rutherford in home three, and what a big goal with just over half the third period remaining. Here it is again, Rutherford, number eight. He's an all alone. Hofford coming out to challenge. Rutherford brings it over on the backhand, and bingo, 3-1. Uh, it's just a great break, and Shyak hurting a little bit. We pointed it out earlier. Maybe just didn't have the speed to get back. Rutherford banks it into the net. Three to one. The Richmond Sockeyes, 11 minutes and 12 seconds away from claiming Centennial Cup Championship in 1987. Broncos again, two goals down. Now, what a hard work required by Humboldt. become a factor. Herbie clears it into the crowd. And it's ironic how a team can pour the pressure on like the Broncos have done basically for a complete period going back to the second frame. And then one break goes the way of the Richmond Hockey Club. And they make no mistake on it. When you talk about pressure, the Broncos have to press now. 11 minutes, 9 seconds left in the third period. Absolutely. All the stops have to come out. There's nothing that will be held back at all as far as the Humboldt Broncos are concerned. 
At center, Jason Phillips takes it for Richmond. Phillips looks in front, moves to the slot, the shot. Hoffert makes the save. Puck is knocked down by Rohorchuk. And Duncan Rohorchuk plays it to center ice. Ahead to Johansson. Stolen now by Phillips. And Jason Phillips shoots it in. Puck into the corner to the left of the Bronco net. Behind the cage, Kozak steals for Richmond in front. The shot and a great save by Hoffert as Bill Hardy had a great opportunity. The Sockeye starting to forecheck effectively. Clear it back into the Humboldt zone. Behind the net, Rob Rice. Gets it up to Curtis Chamberlain, and Chamberlain's long feed to Rohorchuk. Rohorchuk walks in, tries to beat the defense. Dickey has him tied up and bumps him into the corner. Puck comes right back to Trevor Dickey, and he works to the center off the stick of Jason Phillips. Phillips almost gets by Bergen, but the puck is just cleared away, and it hops up high into the player's box for a whistle and a face-up. Now we're down to 10 minutes and 17 seconds left to go here in the third period. Centennial Cup Hockey on STN will continue in a moment. Paul Rutherford did not have a goal in the round robin, but he picks up his first in the Centennial Cup activities at maybe the best time he possibly could. What a time to score, I tell you. Great goal by Rutherford. Good burst of speed. Got in there on the backhander. Three to one hockey game now. The Broncos have to press, and sometimes when you do, you make mistakes. 8.48 the time of the goal. Nine minutes and 43 seconds gone now. The Broncos clear it in. Romeo will play it back behind his net. Luke tries to pick it up to the point. He saw a shot. The flex in front. The save. The rebound is there. The Broncos can't find it. Another chance. Kazoo can't let it go. Kazoo into the corner now. For Stewart. The backhand chance in front. It's loose. And it goes wide. The puck cleared back to the point for Esau. Esau tries to get it, but can't two on two. Richmond breaks back. Moeller. Along with Bobbitt. Moeller. The Bobbitt. The shot. And a save by Hopper. He picks it out of midair. Picked off again by Moeller, a shot, and there's Hopper again to the point. Gunn holds it in. Jim Gunn for Richmond. Feeds it back deep in the Broncos zone. A lot of chances all of a sudden here in the third as the puck is kept in by Claring Bull. Esau will pick it up behind his net to Clark. Kazook then just deflects it down into the Richmond end where Matt Hervey gets it. Hervey for Richmond picks it up and tosses it down into the Bronco, into the rink for an icing call with 9.24 left in the third. And you're going to see an awful lot of dumping the puck now. We thought maybe we saw icing before in the third period with a two-goal lead. You're going to see even, even a little bit more. And Bernie Lynch has to hope his team to get back in. It may take another break. Bernie said last night, no way the Broncos would lose. Well, they've got nine minutes and 24 seconds, and they better get at least two goals and try and send this thing into overtime, or they do lose. I think you have to like the preparation or like Curtin back has had in tonight's hockey game for his guys. Frank Romeo has a mad scramble in front of his net. Kazook had a chance. So did Brett Stewart. Kevin Luke looking for a loose puck. None to be had. Bergen at the point with a shot as the faceoff comes down. Another chance for Shyak this time. He continues to bump. Rice clears it deep. Gaber takes it to the right of the net. Mike Gaber trying to feed it in front. He does. McDougal's shot goes wide. Here's Shyak with a bad angle shot and a good save by Romeo. Shyak maybe surprised Romeo a bit. He let it go from a bad angle. But Frank Romeo had hugged the post as goaltenders should and just held on for the save. Romeo was where he should be on that play. No way that puck was getting by him. And Orland Curtin back, hoping that Frank just plays that same way for the remaining 9.08. Veteran coach, I think he had his team very well prepared for the Centennial Cup Yeah, I don't think he lost a lot of sleep losing 6-1 the other night. He just got it out of their minds and said, let's play some discipline hockey. And so far, Richmond has done that. McDougal back out again, loses the face off. Claring Bull plays it behind the net for Matt Hervey, and Hervey takes it, moves it to center ice. On to the stick of Hardy. Bill Hardy walks inside the Broncos zone. A long backhand is wide of the net. Kozak is bumped off the puck, and McDougal breaks back, loses possession of the puck again, still fighting for it. Bill McDougal leaves for Mike Gaber. Gaber turns away from Hardy and just clears it off Matt Hervey. Comes back to center ice. Bergen onto the stick of McDougal. McDougal can't get by as good job of the Richmond Sockeyes just lining up on the blue line. Not giving any room at all for McDougal and friends. McDougal turns at his own blue line again. Eight and a half minutes left to go in the third. Bill McDougal tries to flip it ahead, has possession, feeds it to the slot. Shyak shot, good save by Romeo. Shyak with a quick drive go, but it was up high on the shoulder. Romeo with a save, another pass in front, and Shyak can't get it. It's tipped away. Back to the point, Novikoski. He walks in, the shot, then a rebound, Gaber. Another great save by Romeo. As Mike Gaber had an excellent opportunity, moving it on a rebound, and Frank Romeo was superb. Save. What a save by Romeo. He's made some dandies this game, but that is a key one. Here's another look at it. Broncos held the puck in. Novikoski at the point. 
walks in and lets a big shot go. The save, and here's Gaber, an open net staring him, and he can get it up high, but just a fine save by Frank Romeo. It certainly was, and another big one and a dandy and a crucial time for the Richmond Sockeyes. He got across quickly, made that big save with only over eight minutes to go here in the third period. That is a big one. There's the Bronco bench. A little concern on the faces there as well, Roger. More than a little. With 8-12 left of the old ticker. You still see Billy McDougal kind of getting a double shift out here. This time with Chamberlain and Rohorchuk to the point. Novikowski's long shot gets through. And on the ice with his stick right where it should be again is Frank Romeo. And he just makes the save. And we'll get another face-off. He'll take the safety factor in this case. A lot of face-offs in the Richmond den. The Broncos want to keep winning those face-offs. Get him back to the point. Let the shot go. Get the shots on net. Sometime they go in. Just never know. They proved that earlier in the second period. It's Curtis Chamberson. Chamberlain made the deflection. Brad Bergen pass out front. McDougal's chase for the face-off circle as is Brian Fuller. Rohorchuk comes in against Tony Bobbitt. Bobbitt takes the face-off. Just clears it to center ice. Throw off a few more seconds as Neil Clark will go back in his own end. Clark bumped off by Jim Gunn. Taken by Bobbitt. Bobbitt walks into the slot. Loses possession. Clark again has it. Neil Clark for the Humboldt Broncos. Moves it up to Curtis Chamberlain. Chamberlain center ice feed on the McDougal stick. He's bumped. Taken away by Bobbitt. And Bobbitt breaks inside the Humboldt line. Feeds it to the slot. McDougal picks it up once more. McDougal to center. Gets it off now to Chamberlain. Curtis Chamberlain cuts to the line. He runs into his teammate, Rohorchuk, and the puck just deflects away harmlessly as Leonard Esau has to pick it up at his own end. Novikoski now will flip it down into the Richmond zone. Chamberlain races after with Mike Claringbull. Chamberlain trying to knock him off the puck. He and Claring will battle for it and hold it for a faceoff again into the Richmond zone. And it should be to the left of goaltender Frank Romeo. There's Orlan Curtin back again, pacing behind the bench. He has a two-goal lead. Three to one the score as Centennial Cup hockey on STN will continue in a moment. Over that Shyak having an opportunity as the Broncos try to do everything they can. This is the replay again of Novikoski shot and the rebound to Mike Gaber. I just don't know how he missed. Great chance for Gaber. I know how he missed. Number 29 was Johnny on the spot. Only one by Romeo tonight. The Broncos up around the 40 shots on goal mark, too. Off the faceoff, Broncos try to pick it up in the slot. Kazook does quick shot. And a save by Romeo again. A good quick leg save. That was a good shot by Kazook. He used speed as a big factor. Bergen walks in. Moves around one man. Bergen tries to feed it in front. Deflects wide of the net. Leonard Esau pinching in. Holds it inside the zone. Back into the corner it comes. Kazook tries to take it away. Stolen by Chensik. Now Brett Stewart picks it off. Stewart walks in from behind the net. The shot. And again, Romeo hugging the post. Forces the shot to go wide. Rutledge tries to clear for Richmond, and he does. Bergen knocks it down at center, almost loses it. Now he does as Phillips, I think that Rutherford picks it up and rolls it all the way inside. Humboldt's into the rink. Esau rolls it up the boards, trying to clear it. Both teams try to pick it up. It's loose in front. Bergen just gets it away, but it deflects to Bruce Hoffer, who had a relatively easy time of it making the save. 6.34 left to go, and that time, that time starting to really pull at Bernie Lynch a little bit as he watches intently. And that's where the Sockeyes want the faceoffs at this time of the game in the Bronco end. Now penalties have not been called this period at all, and maybe could have been one here, although a bit of a dive. Both feet not came all of a sudden. much of a stick in there, no. <laughs> and I don't think Rob Fair will call one like that with only six and a half minutes to go in this hockey game. Now that was Rob Clark. His acting course in New York paid off. The shot, he scores! Right off the faceoff, Jason Phillips gets his second of the game, and that was a big one. That time, Bruce Hoffman appeared just not to be ready, and a good, quick shot by Phillips, and now it's a 4-1 lead, and that could be the nail in the coffin as far as the Humboldt Broncos are concerned. That very well may be. Here it is again, right from the faceoff. Phillips in the circle, and I don't know if Hoffman was ready on that one, like you said, Roger, beaten from the, from the faceoff, and... Four to one, six and a half minutes to go. Only took two seconds, 6.34 left when they took the draw. Two seconds, Phillips a shot, it's in. Oh, how important those face-offs are. Brian Kozak showed that there. Just got it back in a hurry, and if you've got a nose for the net like Jason Phillips does, makes all the difference. It's four to one, Richmond. As they head towards what could be a Canadian championship. Sockeyes clear the puck to center. Jordy Wingate has possession. Wingate drops it to McDougal. Quickly up towards a neutral area. Shyak takes it, rolls it in. Gaber goes after it, but Claring Bowl will clear it away. Claring Bowl to center. Kozak tips it away from the Bronco defense as it rolls down into the Humboldt zone. 
They wave off the icing at the last second as Shyak just tips at the center. Six minutes on the nose remaining in the third period. Four to one, the Sockeyes lead the Broncos as Shyak clears it off the stick of Gaber into the Richmond end. And again, defensively, the Sockeyes have been near perfect. That time, a little double team job by Dickey and Chensik as they clear it away. Bergen will pick it up at his own blue line. To McDougal off his stick. Rice plays it back to McDougal. McDougal to the blue line, coughs it off. And here's Bill Hardy coming back. Hardy ahead to Jim Gunn as he races inside the Broncos zone. Gunn trying to get around Bergen. Gunn rocks right in, clears it in front, and Rob Rice takes over. Ahead to Curtis Chamberlain, pass onto the stick of McDougal, and he loses possession of the puck. McDougal clears it through, but it's picked up by the Sockeyes and shot right back inside the Humboldt end of the rink. Neil Clark ahead to McDougal off the stick of Chamberlain. McDougal into the slot, tries to feed it in front. Chamberlain can't pick up the loose puck, and Jim Gunn coolly moves it away out to center ice. And Bergen has to go back at his own blue line. Brad Bergen feeds it ahead. Chamberlain clears it deep. And the Sockeyes gain possession, and again, this time they glove it ahead as it went from the glove of Clearing Bull onto Dave Tomlinson's stick, so they whistled it down, and we have a face-off, and it'll be back inside the Richmond zone to the left of Frank Romeo. Centennial Cup Hockey on STN will continue in a moment. Jason Phillips to the second goal, a big one right off the face off. Nothing like winning the draw. Two seconds that took, only two seconds. Phillips' second goal of the game, and what a big goal. They're up by three with only four minutes and 57 seconds remaining. Could be the second year in a row that a team from the British Columbia Junior Hockey League takes home the Centennial Cup. Richmond almost coming up with a two-on-one, but they lose possession as Chamberlain tries to move it out. 4.45 left to go in the third. Four to one Richmond as Clark picks it up. Tries to hit Rohorchuk, but misses him, and Clearing Bull once again find it, and he shoots it back into the Broncos' zone. Neil Clark gathers it in for Humboldt. Ahead to Chamberlain, his long pass misses everyone, and goes down into the Richmond zone, where Dickey just makes little time of it, picks it up and clears it inadvertently into his own player's box for another whistle. And we get another face-off to the left of Frank Romeo. There's Jason Phillips. He and Romeo, both big games for the Sockeyes tonight. Phillips has scored well throughout the tournament. He's just continued on this evening. And again, you know, when you have guys like Jason Phillips that have scored as many points as they have for this club, the big guys have to play in the big games. And two again tonight for Phillips. Just doing what Coach Orland Curtinback wanted him to do, and that was be a big man. Nicky picks it up and clears it to center ice. Wingate will grab it. Clear it to an open area. Kazook tries to pick it up. He does, but flips it ahead. Chensik knocks it ahead. Right back to Garnet Kazook. Tries to kick it in. They continue to battle along the boards. And it's picked up now by Chensik. Drops it ahead. Rutherford at center ice, trying to move away from Esau. Loses it to Tomlinson. Tomlinson picks it up, clears it up high over the rafters. And that means a whistle as the referee loses sight of it. Just four minutes left. Four minutes exactly now. Roger, the Sockeyes with that big three-goal lead. And they're in pretty good shape. Orland Curtin back has to be a happy coach right now. Bernie Lynch, I'm sure a lot of concern behind that Bronco bench. No doubt about it. He's walking around just wondering what can happen here, what he needs to have as far as a break goes. His fourth year with the Broncos, he won that Centennial Cup this year. And there is a question whether or not he'll be back next year. Big question. Jakes takes it in his own end, drops it now to Hervey. Matt Hervey tries to feed it to the center. Broncos steal. Long shot by Rob Rice. Good save as Rice really let it go. Luke and Jakes went after the puck. Kevin Logue tries to feed it out in front. It knocked up high, and Hervey just gloves it down. Bergen holds it at the point. The long shot again. The flex high of Frank Romeo. Stewart with a shot that goes wide of the net. Back to the point to Bergen again. Bergen shot. He scores! Two goal game. 
Well, that's a start as far as the blockers are concerned. They have to hope that this is just inspiration for more down the line. We'll see if it is. 3.29 left on the old ticker here in the third period of two-goal hockey game. Richmond 4, Humboldt 2. Not fair as a chat with Dave Shyack and Jim Gunn. The Bronco bench standing. Luke with the goal. Bergen with an assist. Rob Rice also gets an assist. It's 4-2. Play is back underway. Rice to center ice and Gieber. Gaber picks it up, clears it to the blue line. It's taken ahead, and with it is Dave Shyak. Shyak shoots it down into the Richmond zone. Picked up by Dickey. He clears it ahead. The puck deflects away. Rice tries to knock it deep. It goes to McDougal. McDougal feeds it back, but it's stolen there by Moeller, who rolls to the center. Less than three minutes to go in the third as Shyak clears it back in. Broncos trail it by two. Richmond four. Humboldt two is Bobbitt. Tries to clear it out, is effective in doing so as it goes down into the Humboldt zone. After the puck is Bergen. He gets it to center ice to Rice. Rice feeds it back now to Chamberlain. Chamberlain over to Shyak in the slot. Shyak can't find the puck and then shoots it deep into the corner. Behind the net, Claring Bull gets it. Tries to fish it around the boards. Tomlinson does. Rutledge tries to clear. And the puck goes all the way back inside the Humboldt zone. McDougal gets it ahead down to Chamberlain. Chamberlain's shot and the save by Romeo. Rebound is cleared away by Herbie. Clark tries to hold it in, does. Knocks it deep to the corner. Rohorchuk gets it loose to the point. The shot by Wingate. A great save by Romeo as he makes his super save on the blast by Jordy Wingate. Pull his goaltender, take Bruce Hoffert out, and go with six skaters against five. You have to do it. There's the save. Got the left pad out. Another good save by Romeo, but that's nothing new. We've seen him do that all night long. Yes, he's been very, very quick in the net. Has a lot of rebound. The shot by Wingate, it was a good one. That left leg pad drops to the ice, just deflects it away to safety. That leg came up quickly. The Richmond Sockeyes, Western Canadian and British Columbian champions, two minutes and five seconds away from a championship. Rob Rice, the shot, rebound, run! And, and Luke has a shot and is deflected away as Luke was trying to get that puck onto the net as Rice let the good initial shot go. Puck is cleared down into the Humboldt zone, 150 remaining in the third period. Bergen around the boards to Kevin Luke. Luke is checked up by Jason Phillips. Up ahead it comes to Stewart. Stewart, boxing over the blue line. Loses the puck as Herbie just ticks him up. And it goes to Rice, who just tries to drop it inside the Richmond zone. Herbie again picks it up. This time he clears it into the crowd as time has now come down to a minute 35 left to go in the third period. I think Bernie Lynch will use his timeout now. Minute 35 remaining. Get Bruce Offord over. See what they're going to take him out. Still no indication from the referee as if we got something to that effect. Of course, he has that option. Hoffert. Still in his crease. He's starting to come out as Neil Clark comes out. Rob Rice will come off the ice. It's just five attackers for the Broncos, so they do not pull their netminder as of yet. But watch closely to see what Bruce Hoffert does. Neil Clark picks it up and puts it down deep. Chensick takes it behind the Richmond goal. Stan Chensick tries to clear it out. Clark just holds it in. Chamberlain plays it behind the goal. Around the boards it comes for Here Jim comes Gunn. Hoffert. Here comes Hoffert out of the net. Kept in at the point by Bruger. The shot deflects back to the other point. Clark on the ice. Rice, the extra attacker, is out there. Kicked now behind the net. Rohorchuk feeds it in front. McDougal's shot. The save by Romeo. Rebound. McDougal tries to jam it in. Another chance. McDougal in front of the shot. Oh, and the net comes off. It's scoring. And the face off to the right of the net as Romeo kept it out of the goal. McDougal had one, two, maybe three chances. And the net came off and scoring. Then they gave any other opportunity. His third chance, his best chance, but off came the net. Bit of a break there for the Sockeyes. McDougal with all kind of chances. Looked like he had the wide open net at least up high because Romeo was down. He had one chance, a save by Romeo. McDougal, so good with the puck, tries to roll it in and bank it in off a skate. Whacks away at it. Romeo hugs the post, is still down. Here's McDougal with his best opportunity. And then the defenseman moves the net away. That's away with a very wise play by the Richmond Sockeyes. You get away with it. You can be a hero and not play work to perfection. There's the empty net. Humboldt Broncos. 
goes out. Rice, Chamberlain, Luke, Clark, and Bergen. Bergen holds it in. Moves it to the corner. Feeds it out front to Chamberlain. A puck stolen by Phillips and cleared to center. One minute left to go here in the third period. Perhaps all left before the Sockers win a championship. Phillips after a loose puck. The shot. He scores! An empty net goal. Jason Phillips with his hat trick goal. And that should be Kenny by the door. That's almost all there's to it. A 5-2 to two lead for the Richmond Sockeyes as they celebrate at the bench. Phillips has been a big, big man. And he gets his third of the hockey game right there. The Centennial Cup will stay in British Columbia. Open net. Phillips deep in the space off circle. No problem, though. Sharp angle. He had the wide open net. His hat trick. He's got to be a happy young man because he had a whale of a tournament. He did indeed. Jason Phillips, third goal, his sixth of this Centennial Cup hockey championship. Must be a nice feeling when you're a forward and you have the net wide open like that. Especially if you can shoot the puck like he does. Great accuracy. The assist on the play went to number 14, Ryan Muller. 5-2 to two, Richmond. Last year, the Penticton Knights of the BC Junior League won the Centennial Cup Hockey Championship. I think it's safe to say now, with 53 seconds left, as you just did, the other BC team, the Richmond Sockeyes, under Orland Curtin back, winning the Canadian Junior A Hockey Championship. Phillips moves it back inside the Broncos zone, falls down, feeds it through for Brian Kozak. Kozak can't get a backhand shot away. 40 seconds left to go. Kevin Luke tries to pick it up. Luke loses possession of it, is knocked off the puck. Chensik takes over. Drops it now for Hardy. Hardy in his own end. One half minute left to go in the Centennial Cup Championship game. Now it's Phillips just feeding it out to safety in center ice. Rolls all the way into the Broncos zone. 20 seconds left. Richmond Sockeyes getting close to celebrate. 18 seconds as an offside is called against the Humboldt Broncos, and they have to be dejected here before a home crowd. The Broncos gave it a valiant effort, but Richmond Sockeyes were ready. They had key players going tonight, like Romeo and like Phillips, and everyone played a very consistent hockey game. Crowd somewhat disappointed, but they're making a lot of noise right now for their Humboldt Broncos, and a lot of happy faces at that Richmond Sockeye bench. Absolute jubilation as far as the Richmond Sockeyes are concerned. 18 seconds away from the Canadian Junior A Hockey Championship. Polinski walks inside the Richmond zone, tries to feed it through to Chamberlain. Kent, Sockeyes clear it back into the Humboldt zone. Less than 10 seconds left to go as the fans start to chant and clap a little bit here in Humboldt. Three, two, one. The game is over. The Richmond Sockeyes have won the 1987 Centennial Cup Hockey Championship. The players come on the ice to congratulate their goaltender, Frank Romeo. And well, they should, because without Frank Romeo in this game, they may not have won the Centennial Cup Hockey Championship. An outstanding game for Frank Romeo in that tonight. He was on all through the game. Jason Phillips, not a bad game for him either. He had the hat trick tonight. That third goal into the empty net, solving things away with just 53 seconds remaining. The Centennial Cup will stay in British Columbia for 1987. The Richmond Sockeyes, champions, and they did it the hard way, winning on the road. People here at the Uniplex giving a hand to both hockey clubs for the final that they've just seen. The Humboldt Broncos and the Sockeyes now with a traditional handshake. But rivals, nine games in the last two and a half weeks. A lot of hockey between these two teams. The Sockeyes coming out on top. They win five of those nine games, and they win the most important game, the Centennial Cup Championship. As they shake hands and center ice, all those things that happen, all those things that happen in a series or a group of games like you see in nine hockey games, well, I guess you don't forget them. But when you take a look at this scene, as you do in hockey, junior hockey particularly, with the emotion that is so much involved in the junior game, kind of a pleasant sight, isn't it? It is a pleasant, a pleasant sight. The teams, of course, are just getting through their congratulations now. We will have awards at the end of this hockey game presented to all teams involved in the Centennial Cup. Pembroke Lumber Kings, yeah, the MVP, sports, most sportsmanlike player. The Pembroke Lumber Kings, along with the Dartmouth Fuel Kids, are there. They will join these teams on the ice to wrap up Centennial Cup 87. Orlin Curtinback, well, one year as a junior coach and is already a Canadian champion. He's got himself <laughs> a championship. Could never get that championship with the Vancouver Canucks in the NHL. Of course, you can understand why there, but he's got one in junior hockey now. And 
I think his team showed a lot of discipline. I had a chance to ask him why did he come back? Well, he has a couple of friends that are in the organization of the Richmond Sockeyes, and he thought about it and thought about it and has not regretted it one little bit. He said it's been a very rewarding experience dealing with the people that he had to work with, with the Richmond Sockeyes, and how rewarding can it be than what you've seen right here? This is the biggest reward he possibly could get. Well, he's got a very good hockey team, very good hockey team. Centennial Cup Hockey on STN will continue in a moment. Seven Centennial Cup Hockey Championship belongs to the Richmond Sockeyes as they celebrate their Canadian title. We now go for the awards ceremony and the public address announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's most valuable player of the game has been selected by Mr. Ken Juba of the Saskatoon Star Phoenix and Mr. Elliot Papp of the Vancouver Sun. Tonight's players will be presented a plaque from the Humble Broncos by the president of the Humble Broncos, Brian Thompson as well as limited edition Molson's mugs from the Molson's rep, Mr. Nick Bloom, and sports bags from the vice president of Sask Sports, Mr. John Backich. Tonight's outstanding player of the game for the Humble Broncos is number 17, Brad Bergen. most valuable player for the Richmond Sock Guys, number 29, Frank Romeo. Ladies and gentlemen, all of the medallions about to be presented have been donated by Coca-Cola. The bronze medals will be presented by CAHA Atlantic Division Representative Tom Young to the Dartmouth Fuel Kids and the Central Division Rep Don Valcour to the Pembroke Lumber Kings. medal going now to the Pembroke Lumber Kings. Uh, everyone getting their medals as they sat and watched this one tonight, taking third place overall here at the Centennial Cup Hockey Championship in Humboldt. The awards being made player of the game. Well, I think pretty good picks. Frank Romeo certainly was, in my estimation, the difference in this hockey game as he was frustrating for the Broncos. Stopped 44 of 46 shots this evening. Not bad. I think a case could also be made for Jason Phillips because he played a good game as well. Three goals, and that third into the empty net salted things away. Oh, well, certainly it did, and that uh, was a hurter as far as the Broncos were concerned. Phillips also scored the fourth goal of the game for Richmond, which took aside the Broncos somewhat, made it a four to one lead. So Phillips and uh, Romeo had to be considered. Romeo selected the player of the game as far as Humboldt was concerned. Brad Bergen was picked, and he had a couple of assists in the hockey game. And Brad Bergen uh, ending his career in junior A hockey with uh, this performance tonight. He had a very good season this year for the Humboldt Broncos. Of course, he had a good season last year as well. Bergen, the premier defenseman in the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League, in fact, two years in a row, he was named the outstanding defenseman. He played a good game tonight. Not quite enough, though, because the Sockeyes had a little more. 
Yeah, and all teams will be receiving medallions. Both teams, uh, as far as tonight's game goes, the silver medals now going to the Humboldt Broncos. And we also have a souvenir plaque for each of the players from the Humboldt Broncos being presented by Mr. Brian Thompson, president of the Humboldt Broncos, to the Humboldt Broncos. Broncos being awarded the silver medals and they get a nice round of applause from the fans here in Humboldt they were treated to an excellent week and an excellent year as far as the Broncos are concerned they have been very dominant in the Saskatchewan Amateur Junior Hockey League for the past two seasons and have given a lot of entertainment to the people here in Humboldt and the entire Saskatchewan Junior Loop tonight's game the only game they lost at the 1987 Centennial Cup tournament it's the big one though Went through the round robin 3 0. Of course, they played the Sockeyes Wednesday, beat them 6 1. So I think a lot of fans had high expectations coming into this game. But Frank Romeo and the Richmond Sockeyes played well, and they won, I think, fairly easily tonight, despite the shots on goal. Humboldt, by the way, outshot Richmond 46 23. But the Sockeyes made their chances count. They did that. Also, medallions, as we mentioned, being presented to the Broncos at the time, the silver medals. They're also getting plaques that are donated to uh, the championship team and the runner up. Runners up by the Humboldt Bronco organization. A little bit of memorabilia for them. I'm sure the Broncos will not have fond memories, but nonetheless, the medals, now the gold medals. They will be presented by the Western representative of the CAHA, Mr. Terry Scarbo. He will be assisted by the Coca-Cola rep, Mr. Barry Randall. Also, souvenir plaques from the Humboldt Broncos will be given out by Mr. Brian Thompson, president of the Humboldt Broncos, to the Richmond Sockeyes. Occasionally, Jay, we run into a team like the Richmond Sockeyes as they receive their medallions and their, their plaques commemorating their Centennial Cup Hockey Championship. Certainly, it's one of those teams that they play with their 19 people. They really have a lot of people to perform almost at any time in a hockey game. Humboldt's very same, but they're indeed a team. They have some superstars, but they still work together as, a, as an incomplete entire unit very well. I think when you get to the stage of the season, you have to use everybody because you've played a lot of games through the regular season. You've gone through your league's playoffs. You've gone through interprovincial play. You're in the Centennial Cup now playing four or five games in a span of only seven days. So you have to use everybody. And Orly Kirchenbach went through a tremendous amount of players before coming to this team. We were talking Each about that with him yesterday. Team will receive a golf shirt and court shoes from Bauer. For tonight, we would ask the captain of the Humboldt Broncos, number 21, Curtis Chamberlain, to come forward on behalf of the team and accept his Bauer awards. Our presentation is being made on a nice level now. One of the major sponsors of the Centennial Cup 1987, Bauer Canada, making presentations on the ice. Curtis Chamberlain, the captain of the Broncos, receiving one of the awards that will go to his team on behalf of the Humboldt organization. Curtis starting his year with the Saskatoon Blades, the Western Hockey League. He's played three seasons in a Blades uniform, and I don't know a harder working kid. He's uh, just made of hard work. Very disappointed looking on this one. 21, Trevor Dickey to come forward to receive his on behalf of his team. Trevor Dickey receiving his award from Bauer Canada. They will go to each member of the Sockeyes. There are some happy hockey players. Presentation is still being made out at center ice. Again, the Sockeyes 5-2 winners in the final game tonight. 
and the tournament most valuable player have been selected by Mr. Roger Millions of CFQC in Saskatoon, Mr. Jay Boyd, CICC in Yorkton, Mr. Neil Shuchuk, CJVR in Melford. Now the presentation for MVP Griffin, and most sportsmanlike player being made right now of the entire tournament. We have an as well as a chance to vote. The trophies, the most sportsmanlike player will receive from Bauer a garment bag and suit bag, as well as a plaque from Brian Thompson of the Broncos by the Broncos. Certainly this is one of the toughest things to pick when you go at the end of a tournament the most like this and pick the players. Centennial Cup tournament from the Richmond Sockeyes, number nine, Jason Phillips. Jason Phillips, a hat trick. Here tonight, six goals in the tournament, named the most sportsmanlike player. No surprise at all. Good tournament for Jason Phillips. Well, he doesn't spend a whole lot of time in the penalty box. Not that that uh, means it's a necessity when you pick your sportsman-like player, but he does the job on the ice. He stays on the ice. He knows he's there to score goals, and that's exactly what he did in this hockey game against the Humboldt Broncos, and he receives one of the two major awards now being presented with the trophy from Brian Thompson, president of the Humboldt Broncos, Howie Stevenson of the Canadian Amateur Hockey Association, Jason Phillips, 1987 Centennial Cup most sportsman-like player former member of the Brandon Wheat Kings of the Western Hockey League, and he really has blossomed in Junior A hockey coming here with Richmond. He's yeah, congratulated he's by his team. Player of the Cup tournament, besides receiving the trophy, will also receive a garment bag and suit bag from Bauer and a plaque from the Humble Broncos presented by Brian Thompson of the Broncos. As well, the MB MVP will also receive a Balfour ring presented by Jamie Hodge of the Balfour Ring Company and Michelle Bankowski, manager of Diamonds of Detroit. Most valuable player for the Centennial Cup Tournament from the Richmond Sockeyes, number 29, Frank Romeo. Well, he was the difference in tonight's hockey game, number 29, Frank Romeo. Faced 46 shots tonight, played two games in the Centennial Cup. Three games of the Centennial Cup, including the playoffs semifinal game. And when he was in net, this Richmond club seemed to have that little bit extra confidence. And why not? When you make a mistake, you've got number 29 between the pipes, and he's liable to make the save. And usually a pretty good one. He's their number one man, and he showed us exactly what he could do tonight. He was also very strong in the Western final against the Broncos. Doesn't give up many rebounds. Uh, we had a chance to watch their morning workout today. He didn't even put the pads on. He was out there with regular shin pads and a regulation hockey stick shooting the puck around, laughing with Coach Orland Curtin back. Perhaps they knew the joke before the Broncos found out about it. And you know, he had a bit of a sore knee coming into this game. So he played a whale of a game on a knee that wasn't 100%. Howie Stevenson again of the CAHA presenting the MVP trophy here for September Cup 1987 to Frank Romeo. Clean sweep for the Richmond Sockeyes. Kind of an oddity. He wears a towel around his neck, as you can see him as he gets congratulated by his teammates. Ladies and gentlemen, the host Humble Broncos will provide rings to each player of the championship, championship team, the Richmond Sockeyes. For tonight, we would ask the captain, number 21, Trevor Dickey, to come forward as he is presented his ring by Brian Thompson, president of the Humble Broncos. A nice gesture by the organizing committee. Brian Thompson, again, president of the Humble Broncos presenting Trevor Dickey, the captain of the Richmond Sockeyes with a commemorative ring that each member of the champion Sockeyes will get. And they can remember that and they'll have these mementos, but now nothing will ever replace the memories that they have in their minds of winning these championships. The CHA presenting to the captain of the Richmond Sockeyes, number 21, Trevor Dickey. Now what it's all about, the 1987 Centennial Cup, Trevor Dickey, the captain of the Sockeyes, about to receive the big trophy commemorating the best junior A hockey club in Canada for the 1986-87 campaign. Wayne Cartouche of the Saskatchewan Junior League with a banner commemorating the championship. Assistant captains Jim Gunn, Bill Hardy also helping out holding that banner along with, of course, the trophy going to Trevor Dickey. Good rugged defenseman, Trevor Dickey, certainly a leader, the captain of the Sockeyes. I think the whole Sockeye defense played very well throughout the tournament. Herbie played well. Everybody played well back of the blue line for them, and that's one of the keys, although the Broncos did get a lot of shots on goal tonight. They did, and the Broncos could not penetrate that defense. They stood well at the blue line, and they went basically with four guys for the most part. Dickey was there, Chensick was there, Herbie was there. 
Jake saw limited duty. Didn't see very much of Jake's. Clearing Bull was the other fourth member of that defense that saw an awful lot of ice time. This week. That's what it's all about. The Centennial Cup trophy. shoulders and begin that skate around the ice as they display it to all the spectators tonight here in Humboldt. And again, a nice hand, a nice round of applause from the fans here at Uniplex. Capacity crowd in excess of 2,000 people. Do you think any of those young fellows will ever forget this moment? No, they won't. You don't win a Canadian championship very often. They all want to touch it too, Jay. As you can see, they all want to get a hold of that trophy and say, I had my hand on it when we skated around with the 87 Centennial Cup Championship. Probably the greatest feeling those young guys have had. Certainly the highlight of their career. Bernie Lynch made a very good point to us yesterday, saying that when you play Junior A hockey, it's unlike Major Junior. You fight for everything. You try to get a scholarship. Your future may be a little cloudier in Junior A than it is in Major Junior. You don't know exactly what lies ahead for you, so savoring a championship title like this is very, very important. And it's really something for the 20-year-olds because you can't come back. You can go on and play hockey professionally, and you can play and play and play. There's no age limit. In junior hockey, you play until you're 20, and that's it. So I think the 20-year-olds maybe appreciate it a little, a little more than the guys who are 17, 18, 19. Junior A hockey, very important to the 20-year-olds. A number of them are the Humboldt Broncos and a number of the Richmond Sockeyes also. The Centennial Cup hockey will continue on SDN in just a moment. A big third period. By the Richmond Sockeyes, three goals as they claim a 5-2 victory in the 1987 Centennial Cup Hockey Championship. And the game was close, 2-1 after 40 minutes, Jay Boyd. But the Richmond Sockeyes did exactly what they had to do, and they even had a little more offense than maybe some of us expected in the third. You know, we thought we would they would just dump, dump, dump the puck into the Humboldt end. They started the period off that way, but they didn't end the period that way. They, they played good hockey, had their chances. What and, could have turned it around the net. was a goal that was disallowed. The Broncos had a chance right off the top. A long shot will come in. We'll pick it up in just a minute here. And it gets in, but Rob Fair very quickly waves the goal off. It was with two to one was the score. It could have tied up the game as it deflected off Kevin Luke. Very controversial. Just about the six and a half minute mark of the third period, and that would have made it a one goal hockey game again. Shortly after that, the Sockeyes come right back and score. That's Paul Rutherford with the goal. And I think he surprised Bruce Hofford so quickly from the faceoff. No question about it. And then a long shot. The Broncos get one into the net as it was deflected by Kevin Luke that time. That made the score four to two, but it quickly went to an end as Jason Phillips had an empty net and Phillips sniped his third goal. I say sniped, I mean it, because that's the type of character he is, and he put it in to make it five two. He had a bad angle on that play. It was deep in the faceoff circle, but he had the wide open net. He made no mistake, completed the hat trick. When the most sportsmanlike player tonight, heck of a game, good tournament. Now the angle was tough, but uh, as we mentioned a couple of times, the kid really knows how to shoot the puck, and he didn't waste any time on that. And you pull your goaltender, you take a chance, but I'm sure Bernie Lynch had the back of his mind. He said, heck, we might as well lose by three rather than two. We have to pull out all the stops to see what we can do to win it. Well, when you're two goals down, you have to. He brought Bruce Hoffert out. The Broncos had a lot of pressure, too, with just a minute, a minute, and ten seconds to go. There a lot of pressure in the Richmond end. They couldn't get one in. Phillips comes down the other way, puts it into the empty net, and that's all she wrote for the Broncos. I just wonder what the Broncos might be thinking when they go back to that call. It could have tied it up, too. There's a lot of what-ifs in sports and in hockey, but I'm sure they're sitting in the dressing room saying to themselves, if that only had been allowed, it would have been a 2-2 game, and we've been psyched up. We'd have had momentum. There's a lot of happy people down at the Richmond dressing room. We go down to Rob Anderson for the celebration. It is sheer pandemonium in the dressing room of the Richmond Sockeyes, the 1987 Centennial Cup hockey champions for Canada. 1987, a good year for Champagne, as I can taste already, and also a good year for these Richmond Sockeyes. Orland yeah, Curtinback is the coach. Orland, just a tremendous effort by your hockey club tonight. It was. Uh, we just, uh, we've had a couple of mountains to climb and we've had a scratch our way along and uh, tonight was the last one we had to climb and uh, the guys came the guys came through again and it was uh, very very gratifying a very very good team effort 
I think the key for your hockey club tonight was getting that two nothing lead right off the bat in the first period. And after that, the team played very well in their own zone to hold that lead. Well, that's true, but we had a couple of anxious moments in the second period when the play started getting away from us. But basically, uh, basically the third goal sort of put it away, and then the fourth and fifth uh, as it developed was a turning point. Oh, boy, that, I'll tell you, Champagne sure smarts in the eye. Orlad curtain back. what about Frank Romeo? 44 saves in tonight's hockey game. Just a tremendous effort. Well, it was. Uh, Frank has played, uh, as we've gone down the wire, he's played better and better and better. And a couple of situations where uh, where <laughs> where didn't uh, where we had to make a bit of a change. Jamie Stewart stepped in and played, but Frank in the last three games has just been just been great. Arlen Curtin back. I've got to ask you, you. You've had some you've had some success as a player in the NHL. How does how does winning this as a coach of a junior hockey team compare to what you've done in your own hockey career? Well, it, uh, it's each has got. In each individual situation, I've been in a Memorial Cup winner as a player. I've been uh, coaching on, on a couple of championships and, uh, and played in many as a, many championships other than the uh, Stanley Cup. And each has its own merits. And tonight is, uh, per, you know, perhaps one of the, the highlights in my life in the last 10 years. All right, all right. Turn back. Thank you very much. Congratulations on your victory tonight. And coming in now, we have Jason Phillips, uh, picked as the most valuable player in this tournament, or, or most sportsmanlike player, correct, correction. Uh, I think uh, three, f three goals for you tonight, Jason Phillips. You led this hockey team in scoring in the round robin. You have to be just tremendously pleased with the outcome of tonight's game. Oh, I sure am. You know, uh, as for leaving scoring, I, I can't do it without my line mates. Uh, Brian Kolstak just set me up all tournament. You know, he, he's just awesome is the only word to describe him. As for uh, winning this, this is just great. It's something every kid dreams of, and it finally came true. Jason Phillips, this is a second-place hockey team. Uh, I it's just been a tremendous season for these Richmond Sock guys to come out of a second place hockey team out of the BC Junior League and go all the way to win the national title. Yeah, it has. We've been under, under uh, we've been underdogs the whole way through. You know, we just worked hard. We kept working. We didn't stop. You know, Kurt kept working us in practice. And we made it right through the end, and it's just a, it's a tribute to all of us. We wanted to talk to Frank Romeo. Unfortunately, we can't right now. We'll go back upstairs to our play-by-play -play team of Roger Millions and Jay Boyd. Uh, certainly a wet situation down in that Richmond dressing room, but I thought Jason Phillips summed it up very well. You finish in second spot, Jay, and you, you come back and you win a Centennial Cup. It, it's an even bigger, more special feeling because you're coming up uphill all the way. Looked like a lot of fun down there, didn't it? They went through their own league playoffs very impressively after finishing second. They swept right through. The only time I think they really ran into trouble along the road to the Centennial Cup was when they played in the... British Columbia Alberta Championship with the Red Deer Rustlers. Uh, best of seven series. They were down three games to two at one point. But to show the character of this hockey team, they came back from that 3-2 deficit and won the remaining two games right in Red Deer. That was the, the biggest trouble spot. There was no question about that. Although it took seven games for them to defeat the Humboldt Broncos in the Abbott Cup final, they had control of the series. They were always ahead until the Broncos tied it up at three. So that uh, Alberta BC final certainly was deciding. Final shots on goal. Wow, that's a revealing stat. The Broncos lose, but they outshoot them two to one. 46-23. The Broncos outshooting Richmond in the hockey game. A wide margin, but not good enough. And I guess that even emphasizes the performance of Frank Romeo just a little bit more. Scoring in the first period, Richmond with the only two goals in the opening 20 minutes. Dave Tomlinson starting things off at the 16:53 mark, and just shortly after that, Jason, uh, rather Jason Phillips, with his first of three on the evening. And Richmond was off to a good start, a two-nothing lead after one period of play. Exactly what they wanted. Curtis Chamberlain getting the lone goal in the second period. That for Humboldt at 10:47 on a power play. They're back in the game, two to one, after 40 minutes, but it set up a third period that was big. Three goals out of four for the Richmond Sockeyes. Rutherford starting it off just before the 10-minute mark of the period. Phillips with his second of the night shortly after that. Humboldt came back on a goal by Kevin Luke to get close again. But there's the empty netter at 19.07 of the third period. Jason Phillips, so that's the way she ends. 7-2, Phillips with the hat trick. Romeo outstanding in net, stopping 44 of 46 shots. The Rutherford goal. That was scored at 9.48 of the period. He got by Dave Shyak, and I felt sorry for Dave Shyak. He's going to attend the University of Northern Michigan on a scholarship, and he played this game under a lot of pain. Matter of fact, we did not know whether he was going to play, and he was out on the ice for that goal that Rutherford scored that made it 3-1 to one and opened up the hockey game, so you have to feel a little bit for Dave Shyak at this time. Shyak was back there. The defensemen weren't back on the play, though. That's a good point. Where might they have been at that time? But you can look back, and of course, hindsight is always 20-20. Broncos, uh, no doubt, feeling bad about things. Now in their dressing room, not much can be said as far as uh, the Humboldt team is concerned. They had a great year, though, and they can hold their heads up high. 
Great year, a little disappointment now. A lot of disappointment now. No question about that. Uh, the turning point, I just not sure, but uh, certainly that goal that was called back. Well, again, the Sockeyes celebrating again. Let's head back down to the dressing room with Rob Anderson. And we are back in the dressing room of the Richmond Sockeyes. The Sockeyes, of course, celebrating their 1987 Centennial Cup championship. This is what it's all about. This trophy being held by goaltender Frank Romeo. Frank Romeo, the man of the hour, most valuable player in this tournament. Uh, I don't know if there was a lot of doubt heading into the final game, but after a 44-save performance in that final, I think the, the doubt was erased. Well, I'm really happy that the team won. That was the biggest thing to get for the team to win. And if I got the MVP, great, but it couldn't be better for the team to win. I'm really happy. Frank, I think the big key for the Sockeyes tonight, that 2 nothing lead in the first period, and after that they did such a tremendous job uh, of keeping the Broncos at bay. Yeah, 2 nothing lead really helped us out, but second period we kind of died down, and they got a goal. Third period we came out, we really played well, and, you know, we played great. Frank, we've heard a lot this week. Frank Romeo's in pain. Frank Romeo may not play in the final. How badly are you hurt, or are you uh, in any kind of pain at all? Well, I'm in a bit of pain, but they're giving me painkillers to kill a pain. I pulled the ligament in my knee, and I, I wanted to play so bad, and I wasn't going to let anything stop me. Just a tremendous effort, Frank, and a very courageous game and goal tonight. Congratulations, Frank Romeo. Okay, now we have a... <laughs> We have Sockeyes captain Trevor Dickey coming in. Trevor Dickey, what about this Sockeyes hockey club? Uh, you had a tough road to hold. You lost to the Broncos earlier in the week. How much did that incentive, did that give your hockey club coming into the, tonight? Well, I don't know if it's the fact of incentive. We really wanted to put that out of our mind uh, and just go from scratch, start all again. Start again and go from uh, scratch. So, I don't know, it helped us. We uh, got the fire going and uh, want to jump on and get that little wrench. What, a, what about the play of Frank Romeo tonight? 44 saves. Uh, he just made some, some key stops for you guys to keep, after you got that 2-0 lead, to keep the Broncos from closing the gap on you. Well, Romeo's been outstanding all year. He's a great goalie, and uh, he came up really big when we needed him. He came up through in the clutch, and that's what we needed, a strong goaltending, and we got it out of Frank. What about that? Uh, look at, let's go back to that goal uh, in the second period. Uh, the Broncos' first goal in the hockey game, one like that where the puck is just kind of played out of midair like that. That Sometimes that can, uh, you know, kind of turn the momentum in the game and be very demoralizing for a hockey team, but you guys seem to weather the storm. Well, I knew all about that one. I was a defenseman that was standing two inches from the puck. It came across and hit Chamberlain right on his uh, shaft of a stick. And you get goals. If you work hard, you get the garbage goals. you got to work hard to get the, uh, the goals. And they were working hard. They were pressing us. And they got a break there, and it went in. What about the humble Broncos? Uh, a big effort from that hockey club tonight, too. You guys got the jump on them, but they, they kept the pressure on throughout the remainder of the game. Made it interesting there in the dying moments before Jason Phillips got the empty netter. Uh, they, oh, they didn't quit all through the game. They uh, started out big and uh, kept on us even when we got them down. They uh, come back 4-2, and I thought they are going to make a game of it, which they did. They were all over us, so uh, that's all there is. What, only four returning hockey players, but there still seems to be a lot of camaraderie on this team. Uh, how... Uh, Orlan Curtin back in his first year as coach uh, has done a tremendous job, it looks like. Yeah, Orlan's very good with the older guys. He uh, treats us like adults. He's used to coaching that level. So uh, we're a lot of older guys, and well, this is our last year. We want to do something big, and this is it. The Richmond Sockeyes, the 1987 Centennial Cup champions. Let's go back to Roger and Jay upstairs. Yeah. Much drier up here, Jay, as they celebrate down in the Richmond Sockeye dressing room. Trevor Dickey and... Just speaking uh, on behalf of the hockey club and how pleased they are with their overall performance, and they must be very happy with Orland Curtin back. I, I thought his comments were very apropos. He seems to have done a fine job. Treats the older players and I guess all the players like adults, and I, you have to do that with junior hockey players nowadays. It's a little different from the 50s and the 60s. Well, let's face it, they're playing with some people's careers. They're looking ahead themselves. They're, they're trying to do a job that uh, adults have to do, and they go out and they're treated that way, and obviously they respond to that kind of treatment from Orland. And